Sure, we're back. We are we're here back. in person again. I know it feels like we've been in in lockdown. You know, it's like, gosh, we haven't even seen each other virtually live yet. Well, we did see each other at I in person together. We we got to touch each other, y'all. We, we got did. To touch each other. Totally inappropriate touching. It was <laughs> absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> It was totally appropriate and above board. Nothing wrong <laughs> happened. No, no, nothing non-consensual. Nothing non-consensual. <laughs> I'm gay. I know you are. That's why I'm saying it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good to be back. I am so happy to be back on this show with you guys. I'm so happy to see you, Chris. My name is Cynthia, by the way. Oh, and, I'm and my. Chris. Yeah, you're you're the Chris guy. You're the, you know the Will Rich, the W, the W, the W, the, the C dub. We w. Say, the w saying game. Oh, yeah, God. the win. You're the dub. W. I'm the dub. Oh my God. Oh, that's wonderful. It's so it's so great. Welcome everyone. Please um, tell us where you're calling, where you're watching from. Um, like, I haven't done this in so much so much so long. It's crazy. Like. Slightly press, slightly fondle. Like, follow, subscribe, share. Yeah, all of that. Slightly caress, fondle, slightly press, touch, caress, all those nice words. All those nice words. Um, the right welcome, to, welcome to BFF TV. What is BBF? What is BBF TV? What was that underneath? I didn't read it. I never, I, the little scrolls I don't read. <laughs> that was the scroll said welcome to bbft <laughs> <laughs> sorry it's very so, well, um, we, 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 we're missing we're missing our, our our usual intro today so we just went with the tetv one because it's gone missing and we can't access it so apologies um and we were talking about trying to sing the song yeah um, cynthia as we all know can sing yeah. Chris, not so much yeah I, 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 Kelly is awake. Bless her. <laughs> we um yeah I, I I wanted to listen to some old because I can't remember what the thing um uh, what the music is like and 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 then I thought no this is not a good idea and then we had the idea and oh. and we're gonna get into that in a in a little bit but um welcome welcome everybody um thank you so much to our co-producers um kelly and sarah for making this happen again thank you you know what we need to shout out officially to um oh my god who was it that did all of the editing the editing for our iapa show oh, i feel so bad i keep on forgetting her name megan megan <laughs> megan, megan thank you you are our hero and and i definitely do not want you to be an unsung hero so Let's organize a show with Megan because Megan O'Rourke. Thank you very much, Kelly and Sarah, for helping us out. Um, so we need to have Megan on the show to officially thank her for editing all of the craziness that was uh, the recording of that show. <laughs> our, our little trip to um, IAPA Europe. Oh my God, that was so much fun. Anyway, fun all right. Interest was done. Many things were engaged. It was wonderful. So, yes. Cynthia, our guest today, tell, yes. tell us who our guest is, and then we're going to play a little video. I am not going to say who he is. I'm going to let him introduce himself. Uh, number one, because I think it's really cool the way he introduces himself on that video. And number two, because in the pre show, I did not ask how to pronounce his last name. So I would pronounce it the French way, but I could also pronounce it the American way. So I don't want, I'm going to be you and I don't want to make a, a, a mistake. So um, let's just, hey, let's see who our guest is in video. Go for it, Sarah. 
Hi everyone, my name is Jeremy and I'm a balloon pilot here at Universal Orlando for the Macy's Holiday Parade. Well, I actually started as a guest a long time ago. I was selected in the park to be a part of the parade and I flew one of our balloons. And I got hired at Universal years later and I became a balloon handler and then became a pilot and started doing the parade in New York and do the parade here every year as a pilot here in Orlando, I like that the guests get to do it because it's really hard to be a part of the parade in New York doing it every day. My favorite balloon would be the Hippo. Uh, she's great. We flew her, her inaugural flight was last year uh, and then she came down to Universal and then she's back again this year. We lost it. Okay. <laughs> we lost the video. Did we lose, did we lose Jeremy? Have... Should this is the Jeremy question. On screen, and then we'll go into shower thoughts with Jeremy. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Let's have Jeremy, and of course, he did not pronounce his last name on the video. So, could is it any is it possible to have Jeremy on the show? And maybe it's not because ah, yay! <laughs> there he is. <laughs> I like it when technology works with me. <laughs> hi, hi everyone. Hi, hi Jeremy. You know, so tell us now. I You'll have to say my last name. I want to hear it the French way. Oh, Gruner. Gruner. <laughs> I, Gruner. I like that better. <laughs> you do? Grun Grunert. Grunert. So you do yeah. pronounce the T. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, Gruner is, 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 is the French way. Jérémy oh, Gruner. How American of me. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It, it, it's fine. You know, American names are... are many times um european foreign names sure. so you know sure, sure. we make it our own and and you do whatever you want with your name it's your I'm name english and i have a german surname so there's that oh, yeah same so yeah that's true in german it would be grunert <clears throat> grunert <laughs> don't have to be aggressive very it's terrifying <laughs> Uh, I love it. All right. So welcome. Welcome, Jeremy Grunert. To, hi. To, hi, hi. To this, Thanks um, for having me. Yeah, we're, we're, we're very happy to be back live. It's so wonderful. And, and let, me, let me ask you just the first question. Um, are, are you still a balloon pilot? Oh, uh, not for Universal, but I still participate in the Macy's Parade in New York City. So oh, kind of. You. Yeah, that's, okay. a, that's, the fun, that's the fun job. <laughs> All right. So before, usually we don't have our guest on for this intro part of the, our show, but I'm really excited to have you on. So usually I launch Chris into our little um, shower thoughts section. And, and he usually, you know, like he said in the pre-show, likes to get me to laugh to tears. And, and usually it does work. Because I'm, I'm easy. <laughs> Usually, it's just as we start. I, start I, I crack something so that she's starting yes. in the intro by giggling, and then she comes in laughing. I've got, I just <laughs> had a Pokemon not notification pop up in my way there. Right, so I've got three. Um, we're going to start the sort of the probably the weirdest one, and and work our way back. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know that that it, it's. Um, I don't know whether it's well known or people just say that um, st a stressed animal doesn't make nice meat. Like, if you have stressed beef, you it, 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 it doesn't taste as good as if that cow has been relaxed and wonderful, or like free ranged and wonderful. So I don't understand cannibalism because I don't know a non-stressed human. So it must be terrible. That's just one of them that popped in. <laughs> Mm. And then I've got this one. You can learn a lot about someone um, by their birthday expectations um, and what they expect of you on their birthday. Um, I'm very much, a bit, my birthday is on Monday and I'm very much a person of, I will do whatever I want on my birthday, but I expect nothing of anyone else. Like if you want to join, then fine and come join me and we're going to be here and it's an open invitation to uh, whoever is in the local area that i know you're welcome to come and join me you're welcome to not i don't mind um 
that's my expectation but then i it's my birthday you must do this it's my birthday you must give me six gifts like dudley dursley and harry potter what mm. last year there's 36 and i wanted that uh, there should be 37 all that yes. kind of stuff you we love dudley like how someone reacts oh. I'm a fan yeah. I've got like I think that buying Spotify premium is very mm. similar to giving your lunch money to a bully. Because <coughs> they're just it's to stop that and like your life being affected by something that you don't want it affected. I don't want to hear adverts. I don't want you punching me. I don't want you giving me um, all kinds of abuse across the corridor. I don't want any of that. And that's pretty much what they do. And they bully you into paying your 10 bucks a month or whatever it is so that you can mm. listen to your music without being bothered by it. And th these are my shower thoughts. <laughs> all right. Ooh. All right. I think it's so like my advert for Apple Music here. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. It's but, fine. Do we have comments? So my beef, my beef with Spotify and other streaming services is artists are not by far not getting their fair share. I mean, the the um, production di the discs, uh, what are those called? Oh crap, all the I am losing my Compact English. Discs, CDs. No, 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 no. The um, the production companies. Oh right. oh right. The out the, the what do you call them? The music production companies? Producers. Oh my god. The producers, whatever, whoever the labels, the, Le the music uh, labels. Labels, labels. There we go. The music labels, they, they're getting money. Spotify is like getting a crap load of money. And artists get <laughs> go, I'm artists. I'm just I'm just <laughs> I opened up Reddit before to look at shower thoughts to see which ones I could steal, and I've just seen one that's made tickled me. Carry on, oh. and I want to I want to bring this one to the the team. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, it, it's just it's so annoying that you know artists they just they they really put out their their heart and soul and blood, sweat and tears in their in their mm -hmm. art form, and they're not getting their dues, you know? And I was reading an article just today that said, um, if you want to really support your artists, you should go to their um, band, their, uh, oh, well, I forgot the name of the website, band, I want to say Bandcamp, but that's American Pie of me. Um, <clears throat> band, uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> that was like the reference. Sorry. And this um, one time it, a band, band camp? camp? <laughs> yeah, this one time a band camp. Um, <laughs> I think it is. I think it is band camp. Sarah, Sarah is saying that it is band camp. Um, so it, it, that you should visit their band camp once a month, and that way they get money. Yeah. And so I would like to invite everyone who likes an artist to just visit their the way they favorites. make money's changed though because they get more in um sponsorship deals and um all of the ad advertising that they do they get more out of that than they make from their actual music yeah but the, i mean it, it shouldn't be the case kelly uh, kelly's asking if it's um patreon for for bands and yes it is essentially patreon for bands mm. um but that i mean getting advertising it, that's a to, that's a to, that's a side business. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't like compensate for the work that they put into their art. I mean, I'm a musician. I I, I sing. I play in a band. Um, we don't earn money because we don't sell discs or anything. We don't. I mean, we don't sell anything. But damn, I mean, the people who who are professionally recognized as 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 artists that deserve to be heard i guess well everyone deserves to be heard um people that are streamed on spotify i mean jesus christ i mean they should be getting paid and, and it should sure i'm be sure they, I'm, I'm sure it is still the wrong way around but it must have changed because i mean 
I've never seen I've never seen Adele do a brand deal, and she literally breaks the internet every time she opens her mouth. Yeah, but how much money is she getting for breaking the internet? I mean, she's that's, crazy that's rich. That's the question. She's yeah, crazy rich. How is she getting that money? Well, is it uh, from her concerts? Because concerts are still making money for for well, it's performance, isn't artists. it? Because I mean, the, you, the 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 way that they do it now is if you write the music, the songwriter gets a license mm. on on everything that's done with that with, mm. with that song. And being that she writes ninety percent of her own stuff. She mm. makes more money. I mean, that's why Ed Sheeran yeah. doesn't really perform as much. He just writes stuff for other people and then releases mm. an album every couple of years and, and breaks the internet. But the rest of the time, he's, he's, he's writing songs that don't quite suit him and making crazy money by selling them to people like Justin Bieber. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's one shower thought. Jeremy, do you have, do you have any comments on that shower thought? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't mean, I don't think so. I mean, I think I, I do know for a fact, I think if you pre-save songs um, for certain artists when they're releasing new music, I think that benefits them more than yes. you stumbling yeah. across their music because you are making a conscious decision to go and, and like their music. It's not just shuffling or something, but uh, it's my limited knowledge of that. On that note, yeah. there is a artist on Spotify that I have spoken to and met uh, as part of a themed entertainment association event, digital event, Akantha Lang, who is absolutely amazing and very what, unheard, what, very very small. What's her, her name? Her or his or her Akantha. name? Or what's their name? Um, A C A N T H A. L A N G, Akantha Lang. I put it in our chat. Akantha Lang, got it. But I, I will. I'll do you one one better. I read a really interesting article the other day. Uh, I'm a complete novice when it comes to all of this, so don't ask me any questions. But uh, the whole NFT thing that's you know we're all kind of seeing you know where you can basically own your own art. There, there's a whole piece of the article about how musicians will be able to actually put songs or music into that kind of system, if you will. And from there, individuals can buy into it, basically. You can basically invest in your artist, which ultimately kind of removes any of the middlemen, uh, the labels, if you will, in a lot of cases, and allows an artist to rise based on the the, the audience that they can pull. And it, it was kind of uh, That's very, very... Super heady stuff, way above me. <laughs> but I was I was fascinated by it. I thought, well, that, well that's at least an, an interesting thing. The artist is benefiting directly, so... Um, that's like maybe that's maybe like, um, winds of change. The, it, it it's like um, self publishing an ebook on mm -hmm. Amazon. I mean, I remember. I don't know if you guys. Have Amazon's seen... the worst. My Wait, my, my so... cousin is a published author, and I... um, what she actually gets for her her novels through Amazon is an absolute joke. It's true, but yeah. I will say this. I, I don't know if you guys have read the series Wool. Have you W O O L? No. Um, and it's not written it, by my it, cousin it, Tolkien or Rowling, so and um, I don't like J.K. Really Rowling anyway. So. Uh, that's that's two of my three. So <laughs> <laughs> it's by it's by Hugh Howley. Wool by Hugh Howley, and I will write mm. that down. Um, Howie, Howie, Howie. That's it. Yeah, I'm gonna get it. Howie W. I'm here. Where are you? I'm here. Oh, crap. Ola. There. Hugh Howie. Anyway, they he self-published. And um, thank you. Thank you for being better than me, um, Sarah or Kelly. I don't know who put that up. Um, uh, they self-published on Amazon, and it was so popular that he got a publishing deal, like a hardback, paperback, a whole huge deal and and i think that that is even though amazon is generally the bad guy it is an incredible platform to get your stuff out there it's like etsy you know it, it's it, it's an incredible platform to get your art out there and and i mean that the just wool with um with uh, hugh howie is, is a is an incredible um Example and if they do that with music, I think that's great. I mean, I, God, I would love that. 
There's so many artists just said in the that chat just... that the King, Kings of Leon have done an NFT album, and I've just Googled that, mm. which is why I was looking down. They they have done one and made one point two million pounds or about two million dollars in sales just for that album. Awesome. That's, that's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, we're we're anyway. twenty minutes in, and we don't know a lot about Jeremy. So. It's true. Let's <laughs> Jeremy, let's can go you please on. introduce yourself. Yes. Oh. All right, well, I'm Jeremy Grunert, and uh, I'm a, a theme park producer, I guess is the best way to put that, um, and uh, in industry person, right? Uh, my entire career is in, in theme parks, pretty much, from, from the get-go. Um, yeah, that, that's kind of the, that's the 30,000-foot version. <laughs> but how did you get into doing themed experiences then? Oh, my goodness. Okay, so I actually, I had to call my mom. <laughs> I couldn't remember, uh, you know, I, I did a lot of research before this because I, I had to see what everyone else was doing. So thanks, Ben. Uh, but I uh, I gave my mom a call and I said, how do I get into theme parks? <laughs> she goes, well, we, we took you to Disney when you were small and you spent the entire, uh, I think we rode, I don't know, Pirates or something. And she said, you spent the entire time turned around and then we didn't take you back for several years. And I said, what, what do you mean? And she said, you're fascinated by how everything worked. So you were only looking behind yourself. You never looked forward. So you missed everything. And I, I was like, arguably I missed nothing. Um, but it sounds like that's kind of where it all, so I, I was a pretty small kid. I'm, I'm from Florida. So theme parks are in the backyard and uh, spent a lot of time, you know, that was the big family trip every year to Disney or Universal or, uh, I grew up in uh, Tampa, Florida specifically. So Bush Gardens, Tampa was right down the road. So went there quite frequently as well. So grew up in theme parks and um, became passionate based on how they how they work. I, was, I think I was fascinated. I think my poor mother was, uh, she loved that I was so into it and she thought he's gonna be an engineer. I'm not an engineer. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so I, I got into it um, basically just curiosity. I was just so curious mm -hmm. and uh, that was where it all began. So trips to the parks and being immersed in it all and uh, sort of soaking it up like a sponge. And that was that was the beginning. Wow. That's really yeah. cool, though. I mean, it's it's fun how how people get into this and, and, you know, living in living in Florida, everyone knows what themed entertainment is or theme parks, at least. And and it, it's just it's easier when when you grow up in in those areas that you this becomes a possible job situation. What what um sure. what kind of what are some of the challenges that you've um, had to deal with when in your career? Goodness, well, I, you know, I I was never much. <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess we go deeper into the story, but I was never much one for school. To be perfectly honest, it was always a means to an end for me. <laughs> um, uh, it just it wasn't my it wasn't my path and. Uh, back back in the day, uh, as a, a young uh, wannabe theme park designer, it was very much um, uh, engineering, I, I think, or, or a true artist, or, or someone who actually you know physically paints or or has like a as a subject matter expert, you know, artist mm -hmm. style. Not um, the, the the careers that were in themed entertainment weren't necessarily very well defined back then, or at least they weren't defined to me. And I thought for certain I wasn't going to get in there because, or into the industry because I couldn't, I wasn't just, I wasn't going to be an engineer. I was very much a people person and I brought people together and I managed, I was much more of a, a leader type of person. And I thought, well, I've got to have some, anyways. Um, and I ended up going, I, I obviously completed high school and went to college for a few years and did my best um, with that. And then ultimately just dived into the industry, just raw experience, doing everything I could to develop. Um, a palette for of opportunity through actual experience, and and that was kind of my path. So I, I would say that was a pretty difficult. Um, you know, obviously sometimes when you're in, sort of coming from an educational space, um, you're afforded certain opportunities in the internship realm that might not be available to individuals who might not be coming from that direction. So some of those opportunities were off the table, and um, so it wasn't necessarily the hardest thing. Uh, <laughs> I've done plenty of hard things, I suppose, but uh, but that that was definitely it was a little bit of a hurdle for me. Uh, my chosen path into the industry uh, and theme park producing is such a vague thing, I suppose, because you can't even even if you do go to school, there's not necessarily. I suppose nowadays there's courses for everything, but back then there certainly wasn't theme park producing courses. Um, so right. it was, I think the closest I could ever find was music. Actually music producing uh, at Full Sail University had just become a big deal. 
Um, so I could have become one of those evil label people stealing money from <laughs> musicians. Um, but yeah, uh, so that was kind of, that was a, that was a difficult path I chose. And um, mm. I, I worked really hard and, and found my way and yeah. So you, um, you did provide us with a few uh, previous projects or uh, the palette of opportunities that you have oh, run into in your life. Made that up. <laughs> oh, it, and it, and it, it, Kelly is saying in the, in the comments section that, that it is actually very poetic and it is very true. Oh, very poetic. I, mean, so, I, I didn't make that up. I, I mean, I coined that just now and it's. <laughs> yeah, well, that's wonderful. We love it. We love oh. it. We're, it's inspiring. Unsung Heroes inspires people. <laughs> I think we have right. inspiring people on. I don't think it's, it's us true. to do any. Yeah, I know. We're just we're the we're we're the vessel of inspiration. Ooh. We're the chalice. The chalice. The, oh yes, people drink from our chalice of tea. -tea. I, I was waiting for you to go the Jungle Cruise joke. It, you guys inspire people to go deeper and deeper into the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Chris. That too. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm done. I need, I need to go get another oh, glass. <laughs> it's, it's, it's only, it's only noon here in Orlando, so. You know, oh, where we it's five o'clock somewhere, and it's past noon is also one of my rules. All right, exactly. oh, you have the so best rules. In, in France, in France, the before dinner drink is called an apéro, and um, they say that it, that it, it's apéro time somewhere in the world. So you know, it's oh. time. They, they stole that from Jimmy Buffett. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> All right. So tell us, tell us how, um, how, how you, you know, what the path was, your, your, your oh. different project through those pictures. Yeah. So uh, I got, we got to go back, we got to go back to the beginning. Um, Cause I, I do, I, I'm uh, any, anyone who knows me will know that I'm happy to share my story because I hope that someone somewhere sees themselves in a similar situation and can go, well, if that guy mm -hmm. can figure it out and it's like, yeah. Um, but, uh, so it, it started, uh, back in, in Tampa, Florida when I was a kid and I, um, I think it was 15. Uh, and I got, I went into Bush gardens, Tampa Bay and they said, all you can do Jeremy is sweep. And I said, I will sweep everything in a theme park. And I'm, I'm got my little outfit and, uh, sweeping, sweeping a theme park. And they're like, well, you can't work the ride. You can't do anything. I don't, I don't care. I just want to work in a theme park. And I, I think I could work, oh goodness, labor laws, six hours, 10 hours a week or something. And, uh, so I swept that theme park, uh, like nobody's business. And, uh, that led to uh, a slew of, of job opportunities with, uh, just running rides and the little, the, the, the shift leader, team lead, whatever they called it, trainers, all those things. And I just thought, man, this operations thing's great. So I, I, I I'm 16 in high school and I have like all these comp tickets and everyone loves me because they can get into Bush Gardens for free. And I, I was living my best life at 16 there. Uh, <laughs> and I, I, I then was given an opportunity uh, to go be a part of a new ride. And that was kind of, that was kind of it for me. Uh, I think somebody has a picture of me standing on top of a roller coaster uh, somewhere hidden. I don't know how to tell that to somebody, but it might exist somewhere. Oh, <gasps> there it is. It's pixelated because back then that was a flip phone. Oh right, a, ra a razor flip phone, believe it or not. Anyways, but uh, I got the opportunity Everyone to go had over. a razor. Yeah, it and it broke. Um, I'd love to say that it broke right after this picture, as it fell to its doom. But that wasn't the case. I, I think I sat on it so. <laughs> uh, and crushed it. It's far less, far less uh, poetic. But uh, I, I got the opportunity to go over and be a part of a new ride. And uh, I mean, I, I had you know I, I shared earlier that. I think I, from a pretty young age, was passionate about doing this theme park thing. And I didn't know how to figure it out. I mean, I'm obviously in high school where you start to, in theory, figure things out. And um, I was given this opportunity. So I got to go over and we worked in, you know, in uh, my first time wearing steel toe boots and being in the field and watching them. I actually remember when they lifted this big hunk of track into place that I'm, I'm standing on. Uh, I remember when they lifted it into place, just standing out on the side, you had the hard hat, which arguably, what would a hard hat do in the event of that large thing falling on you, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> I never, I, I, I didn't question it in the moment, but I thought, I remember thinking like, I don't know that this will do much good. Um, I but have that, I have uh, that on every site I walk onto. It's like, what, what is the hard hat actually protecting me from? Because yes, the odd falling tool, but if there's no one working above me, it's only, you're telling me I should be wearing a hard hat in case this building falls down. Yeah. Have you have you ever seen the the 
have you seen the demo on the, the the traditional GC demo where they put the watermelon and they they drop a hammer uh, with a hard hat on and they go, look, the watermelon survived. And then they do it without. And but of course, the poor watermelon dies. Um, uh, well, I don't know that it dies, but it's not in great shape. Uh, it, it seems to be a staple of a lot of construction. Anywho, they, they always show that. And I'm like, but please show me what it looks like with the watermelon and the hard hat and the, the some ton amount of steel that you're lifting into place, because I don't know that that uh, PPE always wear it. OSHA recommended. Sorry, I don't want to be <laughs> all of that. But also, Sarah has put in the chat and this is Unsung Heroes, <laughs> that hard hats protect you from lawyers. Exactly. Sarah, Sarah makes an excellent point, And we always like yeah. to make the lawyers happy. So, and, anyways, and, but and Kelly, you know, and Kelly is saying that it, it, it must was that safety attire like uh, official uniform shorts with steel toed boots. Well, I'm glad I'm glad that Kelly brought up that that attire right there because those short shorts are definitely something we should focus on. Oh, you call uh, them no, that... short shorts? <laughs> I come from a very different community. They are long shorts. Yes, those are oh. long shorts. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. According to Chris, short, quite short. modest. All right. In the short, post short. show, uh, in the post show, I'll show you a picture. <laughs> um, no. no, so this, no. This, I mean, this. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> we'll, we'll end this abruptly and I'll sign off right away. Uh, no, this this was after <laughs> it, it opened. These were the uh, the mandated uh, team leader, whatever uniform I was wearing, I think, at the time. Uh, but. I, unfortunately, I, I mean, I only have a limited amount of photos to show because I've realized that I'm always taking photos or everything's under uh, NDA. So <laughs> I have not so much to show. I, it's like the story of a theme park producer. Um, yeah. But anyway, so this this whole thing happened. And then I um, so we got to be there, did the commissioning, got to work with, uh, oh, goodness, with the B&M guys who built this. It was great to kind of interface with some of the ride manufacturers. and. Uh, I was a pesky 16, 17 year old kid asking questions and how do I do this? And they all said, go be an engineer. And I said, well, damn it. Uh, <laughs> not again. Uh, this, this, this engineering thing keeps coming back to me. And I was like, all right, well, I guess I'll figure it out. So I did that, uh, finished, finished high school. Uh, and actually a few years later, it was great because I had that opportunity. It's, I guess my story is all about one opportunity that leads to another and how important it is to never miss even the smallest opportunity because it'll somehow uh, snowball and help you uh, even 15 years later. But um, they, a few years later, ripped the floor off of that um, ride and made it uh, like a floorless so that it was even, as if falling 200 feet straight down wasn't scary enough, they, they took the floor off so that you had to go straight down without a floor, um, and which is phenomenal if you've never been on it, it's quite good. Um, but they actually gave me a call and I came back and I was able to work on it again because I had had the experience of being there and kind of running that. Some of the other folks that had done it had moved on. So uh, it was a great, great lesson in just trying to get your foot in the door, even in a small uh, little entry role, it, it can lead to something more in the future. Um, so mm. I did that and uh, that was swell. And then I graduated uh, high school. And I decided that uh, I needed to move to Orlando because I needed to be close to where the theme parks were. That was that was going to be the thing. Uh, you got to be close to where a theme park is to design it, right? I mean, maybe not nowadays, but back then at least. Uh, and I didn't want to move to LA and uh, at, at 18, that seemed uh, ill-advised. So I, I went for Universal and I thought, well, I'll get a job at Universal. And I used to tell you, you know, what the old adage, if you want to work at WDI, you have to go sweep the, you, you serve ice cream on Main Street. This is like the formula that everyone tells you. You have to serve ice cream on Main Street and then you have to go sweep up a model shop, uh, which I appreciate, but uh, neither role was available. So <laughs> I, had to, I had to move on to other things, but. Uh, I found myself at Universal, and I did all kinds of things. Uh, that's where that's where it all started. So that was probably about 17, 18. Uh, so I've been on and off with Universal since I was 18. So um, you know, well over a decade. Um, so that's I, I definitely call it my home. Uh, and I've done some things in between, but uh, at Universal, I did all kinds of things. I started out as an operator. So I think there are other embarrassing pictures of me, maybe. Uh, somebody can find those, I'm sure. Uh, but I, I was, I, I worked the, the, oh, that's that's me on the left holding a light. Uh, that was the mummy ride. Uh, shortly after it opened, I got to go in and help with that and ended up opening the Simpson ride, meeting some of the creative teams there, which was a great step in the direction. They, they all told me we don't hire anyone uh, and good luck. So at least they didn't tell me to be an engineer, which was nice. <laughs> um, and, and then uh, I said, well, I can't just do this operation thing. I mean, I guess I can, but 
uh, I don't want to just operate things. I said, well, what, what else can I do? And um, I, had a, I had a good mentor, uh, this gentleman, Mike Aiello, I'm, I'm sure some of fo some folks have heard of him. He's a kind of the entertainment Halloween Horror Nights guy, uh, I think is what most people label him as. But he, so why don't you get into production management with some of the, uh, you love Halloween Horror Nights, you've, you've been acting in it. I think there's embarrassing pictures of me dressing up as silly things. Th those are probably fun too. I don't know, I just tried to find, oh, <laughs> yes. It's a bad hair day. Uh, it was a scary, scary wolf man uh creature thing and then I, there's another i think there's another one of me being a zombie or something i don't know i'm covered in blood or something embarrassing ah there we go also me with spiky hair that was a long time ago <laughs> <laughs> but uh so I, I started out this i said well i guess i should get in entertainment and scare people or something and i i, I danced in parades and um I, I dressed up like monsters, and uh, then I oh oh wait, look at that! There's actually a Mike Aiello in this chat. Look, at, I didn't even know he was going to show up. He's in LA. Uh, yeah, so so yeah, a Mike Aiello, a random Mike Aiello appeared, and uh, I think I had been some pesky kid just you know pestering him and saying, "How do I?" You know, I, I used to get in trouble because I'd go, they'd be setting up the scare zones or the haunted the scare mazes or the haunted houses, whatever you call them, and uh, I'd go out in the field and uh, while they're installing them after hours. And I just sit on a curb and watch them build things because I didn't know how to build anything. And I thought, well, this, this, I don't know. I, my whole, my, I guess my whole career was um, just making up things and uh, trying to learn from other people. It was, it was much more like a uh, raw experience in the moment as opposed to sitting in a classroom or something of that nature. But anyways, but uh, I think all those, those guys and gals judged me and, um, they, uh, cause I just sit out on a curb, but they were all great. And they would tell me how things came together. And they said, you know, these, these, these planning sessions take 10 months. And, uh, this is, you know, what I did. And I started to meet people and kind of increase my network. So it was really, really worth it because I wasn't able to get into those business units or work with those teams, but I was certainly allowed to be around them with my, some of my credentials for just being a part of the, the park and working with the company. So, um, Mike, so why don't you get into the management stuff and do something like that? And, uh, that's about the time where I split and I did a little bit of uh, like stage management, production coordination, kind of got into a coordinator role, which is a very, a very good starting place for anybody who wants to be a, a show manager, producer type. You gotta, it, you're going for like a coordinator route. That's the, that's the correct direction. Um, and I, I started managing some of the haunted houses and the mazes and the parades and learning more about how they are come, how they come together, how you train the teams and kind of moved into another project. It was actually the department was called entertainment projects and learned more about how projects come together. And so that was phenomenal. Uh, through that was able to start working Macy's, which is the sort of the fun video you guys shared at the beginning. I'm, I'm actually sad because I go into great detail about uh, all the hand signals and you guys are now not prepared. You don't know how to fly a Macy's balloon. So I've, I've failed all of you. <laughs> We, we can go after him in the, the post show, but um, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I got into it because I had done it years before when I was a guest. They used to that was the, the coolest. I, I said it in the video, but it was the coolest thing is that you got to bring guests back, and I, I loved it because those are the same balloons that come from the the parade in New York. So a lot of people have like really really passionate like they have they have memories because that's what they put on their you know the the telly. Um, every Thanksgiving, uh, you know, every year during Thanksgiving, my mom or dad or whoever is, is in the kitchen, you know, producing uh, the turkey and such. So being able to be um, sort of introduce people to that, let them touch them, let them be close, let them carry one and be a part of it. I just thought that was a really cool, because I grew up watching the parade. Uh, and so it's phenomenal. But anyway, so I, I got into it and then I learned more about it. And that started taking me to New York uh, where I was doing the parade, uh, the, the big parade, the, the proper parade. Uh, which led to more opportunities and more introductions and kept putting me in the room with more and more people. And um, that is kind of the, where the snowball started, uh, I guess. <laughs> um, and then that's when I, I went to IAPA uh, right around that time for the, for the very first time. Uh, and it's where I actually met my second mentor. Uh, I, I went to, I applied for something called the IAPA ambassador internship. Uh, you know it well. <laughs> uh, oh, you do, do you guys seriously, do you, do you really? Yeah, so yeah. Um, on the uh, literally at the IAPA we've just been to, I spent probably about a third of my time in in the building talking to uh, young ambassadors from from wow. IAPA and um, introducing the TEA and what the TEA is for for my role there, and then also what I do um, in in my role in in my company DJW, um, and and how how to help and how to integrate and how to 
uh, form connections and help that. So, so I mean, and I know Cynthia has a different connection with IAPA, but far more ingrained. Oh, okay. I feel like I need yeah. to hear more about that connection. <laughs> oh, I'm just, it, it, it's its no secret. I am um, a member of the sub, oh, it's no longer a subcommittee. I am a member of the Committee for Education at IAPA EME. So we we oh, okay. um, right, designed right, right. the we designed the um, uh, the conference sessions um, that take place during the IAPA show, um, and mm. yeah, it's it's it is a role that that um, it is super important and takes a lot of my time, and I love it. And mm -hmm. the ambassadors is really a really cool way for young people to oh. get in and meet people. I mean, it's so amazing because you're just you're you have this this badge that essentially says i'm really interested in Dude. this industry but i don't have a job in it yet but i would really like one <laughs> you know, that's, that's essentially what it means and and oh, i think it's 100 so cool. mm. oh it, it was um i'm i'm the biggest ad well i'm probably not the biggest but i try to be the biggest advocate for this program because it, it changed and honestly it changed my life um because i i tried so hard to get in the industry but um, I mean, we're still talking like two, 2004 or five ish time frame where um, it, it was still the internet was available, but it certainly wasn't as easy as flipping on LinkedIn to you know connect with someone and, and kind of grow your relationship or all these wonderful TETV didn't exist. How am I supposed to know what <laughs> what's going on in this industry? So um, it, it's great to see these resources. But any, anyways, uh, IAPA was a big game changer for me. I, I applied and I got in and I. Um, I had actually, I, um, I actually spoke with Mike Aiello about it and I said, hey, how do, uh, you know, Universal's not hiring for this. I can't find a job at Disney. How do I do this? And he said, well, you know, we work with other companies on occasion that also do this. And I said, tell me more, Mike. Um, and I, I actually he introduced me to Thinkwell and I said, okay, great. So I, I pretty much went to IAPA with the sole purpose of hunting down someone from Thinkwell Group uh, in order to introduce myself and basically ask for them a job. I was going to corner someone and I was gonna ask them for a job. And that was my grand plan at, I think I was 19, maybe, I think it was 19 at the time. Um, so that, that was my big old plan. Uh, and I did do that. Uh, and when I cornered them, let's be more clear, I, I, I just kind of blocked it at an exit so they couldn't get out too quickly. <laughs> but uh, I ran into, <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't physically corner anyone. I just kind of partition. I'm trying to think of the appropriate way to. No, I, 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 I locked it up. No. Like the. Um... <laughs> absconded with someone yes. or politely <laughs> and abruptly. There, the the door was locked no uh <laughs> and that's when I, I met another cynthia uh cynthia sharp um and i she's she's all right i i like her quite a bit she's uh she's an excellent role model for this industry and does wonderful mm -hmm. things and um she's been nothing but wonderful to me since i i mean i've uh, i've known her for years uh, i shouldn't say how many but i've known her for years now uh and i uh i think we we like the term word vomited my my passion and love for this industry Gen gently took hostage thank you uh, michael yeah. that, that's the right, so that's just, the right if you didn't already know jeremy cynthia sharp is part of uh, TTV as well and she has a show oh, um i mean it makes sense oh well she does it with um oh what's her name wendy wendy yeah, yeah. uh yeah she's she's wonderful uh any, anywho uh she uh was just the biggest bestest sport ever as i i like i i just word vomited is there no other way to describe it just my passion for the industry and i said i just want to do this and i don't know how to do it and she's like well you got to put something on that resume so keep going uh but she said you know how to and she gave me her card and said you know how to find me so i then took the next couple of years and i took some of that advice that um that mike had thrown at me um uh, there's an excellent, uh, excellent, excellent mentor I had from my Bush Gardens days. Her name was Robbie Laprie, and unfortunately, she's no longer with us. She passed away a few years ago. But her and Scott Swinson, uh, at the time, kind of ran the entertainment programs at Bush Gardens. They had given me some opportunities to help with the haunted houses when I was a bit younger, and uh, so it's just all of these things coming to pass. So I started to really take Cynthia's advice on just building any kind of experience. And I, I, one thing that I was super passionate about with Cynthia that was great is that she said, "Well, are you going to school for something?" And I said, "Well." I did a couple of years for sort of generics. I, you know, I took a, an entry lighting class and drafting class, things that I thought would be applicable, but I'm not really, you know, investing a lot in that. And she's like, okay, that's fine. And it was the first time that I think I had heard someone say, it's okay not to go to school. Uh, you can do this without having a degree. And I thought that was just the coolest thing ever. 
Uh, and she wasn't telling me I had to be an engineer. She sat there and she said, there are people like you. And she said, a matter of fact, people like you who understand how the parks work are incredibly valuable to the designers who do, who are subject matter experts because they're designing a speaker that's 50 feet up. And it's like, well, no one will ever hear that because they're all average, you know, whatever the case is, it's just some insider or this won't fit in a locker or, or whatever that is. And mm. so, um, <clears throat> She she gave me that advice and we parted ways and I truthfully didn't I, I think I caught up with her once or twice but I didn't see her for a couple of years um, and I did everything I could in my power at Universal to just grow and climb and I didn't miss a single opportunity I I took on the I, I grew the balloon program I became one of the main kind of balloon leaders there I, I got into entertainment I did a little bit of everything in entertainment like I said I, I grew into leadership roles grew into leadership roles within the operations teams and I connected and met every single person I could. Um, and I went to every local little, there weren't very many industry events back then, but I, I went to as many that you could find. There was a great donation event called Entertainment Designer Forum, if anyone's familiar. That was a really great program put on by Kim Grommel, where a lot of the designers would sell their art. And then that the proceeds would go uh, and they would share their time and their stories of kind of how they design things. So it was great for me because mm -hmm. I could donate and benefit someone, but at the same time also um, learn from some of the designers. But uh, I just, again, every single opportunity, and that's the day uh, that a job posting appeared for the original Harry Potter land uh, for Universal, uh, for uh, like a PA position and a commissioning and being a part of the opening teams. Uh, and it was wonderful. I, I was able to get it some experience. Uh, I was able to come back a few years later. I went back to the operations, kind of juggled back and forth, eventually got involved in the opening of Diagon Alley. Um, and then after that, there, there were still no opportunities. And, and that's when, uh, I actually, I think I went back to Mike and I said, Hey, you know, I, I've been at this for a few years and i still can't find anything. He's like, maybe you just got to go somewhere else. He's like, you know what? He gave me some really great advice. He said, all of these rides, this whole place, it's all bolted to the ground. It's not going anywhere. And I, and I, I had become comfortable and I had been, I didn't really want to leave. I wanted to grow there, but he said, you know, it's not, go, it's not going to go anywhere. You can come back. And I picked up the phone the next day, called Cynthia Sharp and said, I want to come work for Thinkwell. IAPA was two weeks later. So this is a bit serendipitous that we're having this conversation today. Uh, and I met with uh, Cynthia, I think Kate McConnell, Dave Cobb, Ronnie Ball. There's a handful of uh, Thinkwellians, as they like to call themselves. We ran into all of them. Uh, Cynthia ended up uh, actually introducing me to their CEO, Joe Zenas, as well. And... Uh, I was uh, packed up in a car a few weeks later, uh, moving to LA. So, <laughs> so I, I had my big theme park uh, job, and uh, it was great. I was a, a coordinator. There's a picture of a car here, which is great because it's a bit also serendipitous, if you will. There's a, like a car. Uh, I mean, I love this franchise. I'm the only one, I think, but uh, I'm fascinated by it. It's just uh, exhilarating and fun. But I think it's like a, a car flying through a billboard or something any of the, the behind the scenes. But anyways, uh, I, I got to LA and about five minutes after I got there at Think, oh, there you go. That was my very first project at Thinkwell. So it was funny and a bit serendipitous that the minute that I left Universal and made it to a new company, the very first project I worked on was um, an, a Universal project. Uh, and it was great because that, that opportunity there was, uh, they had, they kind of put me on it because I had experience working with Universal, some of the individuals involved. I was into entertainment. So all of my entertainment opportunities and being involved in some of the creation of the haunted houses and the live shows, uh, set me up for success. And I was able to be a part of the grand opening where we, we essentially shot a car through a billboard, which is uh, a phenomenal little intro to the opening of that whole attraction. So, um, and then and from there, it became a bit of a, a crazy rail, uh, roller coaster, if you will. I, I was able to touch and do so many things because I applied all those same uh, lessons that I had learned just about always being involved in everything I could. So I never missed a charrette or a, any kind of creative session. I never missed an opportunity to be in a room to discuss something or to absorb something. Again, my whole story is just about making sure that I was in the room where, uh, well, in the room where it happened, I guess is, is uh -huh. very, um, <laughs> I guess that's an applicable thing. In the room where it happened, the room where it happened. <laughs> I, I should get royal. I should. I should ask Lynn about royalties for that. So no, but uh, yeah, but being sure. in the room, <laughs> just like being a part of it, was uh, such a big deal. And I realized that you know I was able to work with some great folks. I actually uh, this is a complete side story, but it's wonderful. I sat next to um, a modeler uh, named Kevin Prim, uh, who's a wonderful modeler. Uh, kudos if you're out there watching. 
Uh, I've, I've actually been able to work with him again on attractions at Universal and whatnot in, in a future life. And uh, But I got to watch him model just as like this mesmerizing, he's this beautiful modeler just modeling. I think he's modeling cheese, uh, which becomes relevant at some point at, later in the story. But uh, he was modeling cheese. And then on my, my right, uh, he um, uh, was, a, was a gentleman named Michael. And he's got a cute little DeLorean. Uh, if there's any Back to the Future fans out there, you'll love this story. He's got a little DeLorean that like, it's one of those optical illusions where it's floating and it's just like kind of spinning in a little circle. And I said, oh man, I love that movie. He's like, oh yeah, me too. And I said, oh, I was like, I, it's a cool little illusion. He's like, yeah, I built that. And I said, oh, you built it. And I was thinking he built this little magnet in this car and I'm thinking like, oh, that, that's cool. I was like, where, where do I, like, do you have one? Like maybe I'd buy one or something. He goes, no, no, no I built the car. And I said, excuse me. And he goes, I, I built the DeLorean. Oh. <laughs> And I was like, the the, and I'm pointing at it. He's like, no, no, no. As he like pulls out of his desk a picture of him in in um, uh, Clockhouse Square on the back lot is the literal. Uh, he's one of yeah. two individuals that literally built uh, part of my French, the damn DeLorean, uh, and built it. Uh, just and he's he's so humble and he's just so wonderful. And uh, his name's Michael Chaffee, Um and he's just this a wonderful human who is just talking about. Um, creating this DeLorean that they thought they, when they made the movie, they said nobody, we didn't think there'd be a fan following or anyone would care. It was just a kind of a fun little thing. And we're all just pulling parts off of things. And uh, you know, it was this anyways, but I, I realized at that moment that I was just surrounded by some amazing people. Uh, and that is when I really committed to hearing everyone's story and absorbing and learning from everyone, which is why I'm so passionate about sharing my story with everyone. So, uh, I think well went on and on. I was able to, they actually t gave me sort of a global education, if you will. I, I, I kind of got sent around the world on several projects. Uh, little little Florida Jeremy had never really been anywhere. So <laughs> I was uh, ended up in the Middle East and then China and then London and was able to work with um, every major IP you could probably ever want to. I was I was spoiled rotten. I've, I've worked with the, folk at, the folks at Nick on some really great projects, uh, Nickelodeon. Some folks with uh, Leavesden, so the Warner Brothers tour, both in LA and in um, in London at Leavesden. Uh, I, I've been able to work on Hunger Games, Lionsgate IP, and then I, Warner Brothers is kind of my sweet spot. I've spent a lot of time with them. So, uh, but yeah, so I was able to think well, sent me around the world, and, and that, that was it. That was uh, I don't have any pictures from Warner Brothers because everything was uh, I wasn't allowed to take photos. <laughs> so, but this was the first time we turned the. Uh, the shield on, uh, and I remember snapping the picture to send back to some of the the Warner Brothers folks, uh, and it was uh, that was a that was a great moment right there. That was that was a big big moment because we had you know topped off kind of the it's that's kind of the weenie of the park if you will because everything else is inside, um, but that was it was a phenomenal moment and uh, so, so yeah that, so that's up until that point that was kind of think well and it just opened every door and I, uh, I I was able to work on the Warner Brother Park and uh, just great build a great relationship with the Warner Brothers folks and I love uh, if they're watching out there the Warner Brothers global themed entertainment team um, they are some great folks and great partners and I, I have worked with them on so many projects now and just some truly creative folks over there so um, Peter Van Roden and his team and uh, great partners from the Middle East to London to Orlando, Florida, and uh, what a what a great thing. So, um, and that that park, if anyone doesn't know, is is it's a, a half, it's cut in half, and it's this beautiful indoor park. And half of it is Hanna Barbera and uh, the Looney Tunes, and half of it is the DC uh, superheroes. So, uh, just some wonderful, wonderful IP, Batman, Scooby Doo, and it's great because I grew up on all this. So I was finally, I was sitting in, I'll never forget, I was sitting in a meeting actually with Dave Cobb, and we were talking, we we're having an in-depth conversation about op, what's uh, uh, Opera Doc, which is arguably a questionable episode to be displaying in that region. Uh, and there was a whole scene built around it, and I just remember thinking, like, I'm talking about car it, the whole thing. It was serendipitous. It was the moment I, I was there. I was a part of it, and. Um, and I, I was able to do that for several years and uh, really, really enjoyed that. Um, and so, so that was that was that. And then my phone rang. And uh, several years later, uh, Universal uh, is this unknown caller. And if anybody's ever worked with Disney or Universal, you know that uh, they, they don't let you have their phone number. <laughs> it's, it's always like an unknown number. And I thought, wonder who this is. And uh, it was actually, it was Universal, and they were calling, and they said, hey, would you like to come back and help us uh, make a little more magic? Uh, so all, the, all those years later, kind of, it was, it was nice because I was able to, you know, I, I created those relationships with 
uh, Cynthia early on that led me to my, my first introduction to the industry and, and gave me a great accelerated growth, uh, sort of an incubator, a place to grow and, and really develop my skills. I had a great time with Thinkwell and I met some great folks there. They're really, really, they have some of the best people in the industry working there or have at work there and, and probably still work there to this day. Um, the alumni list is just filled with uh, heroes, if you will. And uh, but, uh, you know, what Mike said was, you know, everything's bolted to the ground, nothing's going anywhere. And uh, it turns out uh, Dueling Dragons was not about to be bolted to the ground and they wanted me to come uh, help produce that attraction. Uh, so I was on an airplane back to Orlando, Florida, where uh, I got to help build a team. And we built Hagrid's, all right, hold on, follow with me, uh, Hagrid's Magical Creature Motorbike Adventure, the ride. So 3D, no, it's not 3D, I, I'm joking. Oh, oh, there it is. Uh, and that, that was, well, what a, a trip that was, <laughs> uh, it got, got to Orlando, hit the ground running. It was a very accelerated project, which was great. Uh, if we talk about hard things that I've done in this industry, two and a half years from start to finish on this project. And it's the largest single attraction that universal, uh, parks and resorts has ever produced. So the, the largest single, it's about six and a half acres. So it's about the size of Diagon Alley, but only one ride. So, or one attraction. So absolutely massive, and we were doing ambitious things. Uh, some of our friends down the road were uh, looking at you know galaxies far, far away, and the directive was to produce an attraction that uh, had never been seen before. And so we we got to it, and uh, we were able to partner with the folks from the film team, Alan Gilmore, uh, Stuart Craig, all the, all the great like this dream come true being a part of this and partnering with folks and. Um, I, you know, just being able to have the team on that was extraordinary. It was actually a mix of some of my Thinkwell friends that were able to come over and be a part of it. And then I introduced some new folks that I had met along the way and uh, just an incredibly would not exist without the team. The team, I, I can't emphasize it enough because a lot of times a single person stands in front of a ride and says this, you know, this here is a ride I built. I'm the creative director or producer or whatever. It's, it's no single person. Uh, it's an army, literally an army. And I, I think at peak times, there were thousands of individuals standing on that site, literally working on top of each other uh, in the safest way possible uh, with just uh, trying to accomplish a magnitude of scope that had never, I mean, we literally built a forest, thousands of trees that we had yeah. to procure. So it was, it, was, um, it was a dream come true because I had always um, always, always, always wanted to sort of make my mark on Universal. I, I had given so much to me uh, over the years and had inspired me largely. I, I was never, you know, some folks are a Disney kid. I was always a Universal kid. I like their rides a bit better, but I, um, I wanted to, to leave my, you know, make a mark and I, I was able to do that and it was a dream come true. So uh, kind of, uh, this, it all became full circle. Uh, I, you know, I was able to catch up with Cynthia, you know, after Hagrid's, and kind of speak to her and she said, well, you did it, you know? And uh, she's like, well, now what's next? And I thought, oh, well, what is next? So, <laughs> uh, and I, I went on to do some epic things. Wink. Uh, we can't <laughs> talk about, we, we can't, Every everyone who's watching this who worked on Epic knows exactly what happened there. Uh, the long four page contract I signed says that I can't discuss that with all of you, but I can promise you that it is in fact Epic. And one day you will get to see some uh, wonderful, wonderful things. Uh, the teams that, uh, again, the, the Hagger team went on to work on that, as well as some really, truly extraordinary folks um, from other project teams. And um, it, it was great. It was a really, really great time to be at Universal and to work on that and be a part of it. And uh, Epic was a, a great kind of book into my Universal career, uh, for, for now at least. So, um, but that that's that's the main story. That That's the bulk of it. It was a kid that just wanted to do it. And uh Kind of figured out his own way, made it up as he went, and the this, in my opinion, the story is uh, is to create a it's a community. I mean, I guess you could say a network, but I really it's this this industry has a great community, and being a part of um, being a part of it, and really jumping into it, and really connecting with folks, um, it gave me every opportunity that led me to do. Um, amazing things. So uh, that's that's my story. Sorry, very long winded, but that's that's my whole story. And uh, passionate. Kind of it, me... it's, it's it's incredible, and I'm so happy that we have used my favorite word three times. Serendipity. Oh no. Uh, yes. Oh yes. I love it. I love <laughs> I love serendipity. I I I love the idea of serendipity. I love the way it rolls on on tongues. Serendipity. It's just it's like this. It, it's it's a beautiful word 
I was going to say something absolutely atrocious then. I'm so glad I bit my lip before I did it. I'm so glad you did too, Chris. Oh, no. I'm, going to, I'm, I'm just going to move on now because I'm speaking and uh, said something horrific and it was going to be worse. Um, but Jeremy, all the, way, all the way through that, there was like a, a, a clear vein of mm. every time you got to a point where you had to make a decision, you were encouraging people watching to take a leap somewhere. Um, ah. to go and talk to someone um, to go and uh, to push push where you think you maybe shouldn't push so it, sure. it, one of our questions kind of fits that and I'd like to ask you the question directly um, so what what do you know now that you wish you could have told yourself when you were starting out mm -hmm. I I, okay, I've got it. Sure. I've got it. Um, so it, it's something I, I've learned more recently. Uh, not, I haven't learned more recently, but it's something that, um, that and it, I'll give some credit to Cynthia Sharp there. I can't take full credit for this one, but uh, it's the, the give back and, and to be available. Um, and it sounds funny to say give back and available when I started, but that's actually the, the key. Um, and I mentioned it earlier, uh, the idea of... Um, uh, the that I grew up with the idea that the notion was you had to sweep Main Street and uh, serve ice cream and work or sorry uh, I had it backwards you had to be ice cream on Main Street and then go sweep a model shop which is kind of like that that's how you become an imagine uh, or uh, I think that's a, a notion at least that some people reference but anywho um, you know I took a lot of advice from senior individuals in this industry and I looked and I targeted individuals largely because they were uh, I, does anybody else remember the 90s Disney specials uh, where you saw Tony Baxter, Joe Rohde, uh, Scott Trowbridge, the whole the whole slew of the the, the great, some of the legends in the industry, they're all standing there and they're talking about Tower of Terror or the the oil rig that is the um, the, the Tree of Life. Am I the only one that saw those? I don't know. Do you guys remember those? The '90s like deep dives. I do. That you have them on VHS until the VHS failed because that's what I had. And back then, when the VHS failed, you were screwed. <laughs> So, so my grand, my grandfather, what was sent to Disney for for um, who he worked for at the time, which is the National Motor Museum in Bewley in the UK. And oh, wow. he, um, the the Lord of the Manor said he wanted to have a motor museum and he wanted to have a ride. Um, and he he'd been to Disney and he wanted to have uh, the haunted house ride, but he wanted to oh. have the, the ride about cars. Hmm. Um, so he sent my grandfather out to figure out how to do it. Oh, um, all right. So my grandfather went to Disney. Uh, he, he went five or six times over a number of years, um, fi fi figuring it out and, and asking questions and the right questions, the right places. Went mm. to go and speak to Mac in Germany. That's now Europa oh, Park and yeah. Mac. And then went no, back yeah. over with Mac to um, to, to Disney to, to, to speak to the Imagineers and, and figure it all out and did create a ride. So, uh, but he had the VHS tapes, and being so particular as my grandfather is, as soon as the ability to digitize those uh, VHSs oh. came about, he digitized them. So now we have DVDs of them that he created from the VHSs before they died. We'll we'll have to talk later because I I don't have That's them. I, I found I found one on YouTube years. Anyways, I I I love them, but um. I realized I was getting a lot of advice uh, from uh, folks that had been at this for 30, 40 years or, or had invented it, which is great. Um, but I think what I realized is I needed to take perspective from them and I needed to learn from someone that was directly above me. And then I needed to, as soon as I figured something out, I needed to turn around and I needed to tell it to the person below me. Um, so, sorry, that was a long-winded way of answering your question, but I, I wish I would have known sooner that I should have been communicating how to do something to someone behind me who was equally at the same place or right behind me because it doesn't do any good. Um, the way that uh, Tony Baxter or someone got into the industry isn't really the same way that I was going to get in the industry. It wasn't. It, it, I, if it would have been, I would have been sweeping Main Street and <laughs> working in a model shop. But uh, I learned that uh, you have to provide advice up uh, to, the, to the person in front of you. It's kind of like climbing a ladder. You needed to tell the person above you um, what what they need to know while telling the person behind you what they, they need to know. And um, that chain of communication allows the folks behind you to keep up at, with pace and you never get a gap in between. And you're always, the transfer of knowledge 
is much more uniform and it is available and no one ever has to feel like they don't, that no one has to figure it out from scratch and no one has to do it alone. You, you are a tribe or a community and we are, we are sort of pushing that information. I, I'm doing a diagonal thing here. I don't know why, but that's, it's pushing things down a ladder in case anybody needed to know that. Um, but it, it's this transfer of knowledge. And I wish I would have known that sooner that my knowledge, even just knowing what I had learned by sitting on a street curb and watching someone install um, a big, a large set piece. I, I knew how they built it. I, I had figured out that it, the truss is a substructure that, that, that comes onto the truss and whatever the case is, I didn't know that before because how else do you know that? I, I don't know, how else do you learn that? Um, I guess if you become an engineer, you know that. But being able to look back and I wish I would have known that sooner because I would have been able to have been an advocate for the person standing behind me in line and it wouldn't, there wouldn't have been a gap. So I never miss an opportunity. I, I joked at the beginning of this that I always share my story because my story might uh, be either ridiculously fun, uh, completely boring, or very, very important to someone who's following a similar uh, career trajectory and maybe doesn't see themselves as going the college route. They see themselves as going more of the experience-based route or whatever that might be. If my story can help them along their way, why would I not? That's what our industry is founded on is, is this true tribal kind of nature. and um and and taking care of the well the family if you will so um that that's that's my long-winded answer i hope that works <laughs> that was fantastic as an uh, answer oh totally. i think good I, honestly I, i'm i'm loving i'm loving this one i'm okay. having such a great time it, yeah. totally I, I i i totally i totally agree and um so i i think and now i've lost track of everything but um we're on on um i'm, I'm going to ask you the next question which is oh um, Seven. Yes, thank you. Um, <laughs> how how does your your current role fit into uh, a project? Like, tell us tell us your typical Ooh. your typical day. So uh, the the part of the story I haven't shared yet. Um, Epic um, was a, this is also something that's a great piece of advice for anyone. Uh, sometimes projects stop. And when they stop, they stop hard and everyone finds themselves looking for new opportunities. Um, and that's not bad. That happens. You've signed up for a wonderful industry full of great opportunity. And sometimes things go wrong uh, because you're literally making up impossible imagination. You're, you're literally dreaming up how Harry Potter could exist in the real world. Uh, and that requires a large checkbook. And sometimes people don't want to write the check at a particular time. So anywho, uh, things of that nature. And we've anybody who's in the industry knows that uh, by now has probably experienced it. And if you haven't ever experienced that, you will. Uh, well, I hope you don't, but you probably will. Um, but, uh, I, uh, had inadvertently helped a company kickstart while I was on Hagrid's. Uh, I had been, uh, because of that accelerated timeline, we needed to find different processes for, uh, producing a show design package because we didn't have enough man, uh, enough, I should say manpower, enough individuals, uh, together, uh, to produce what was necessary to go out. So we, we kind of looked into unconventional um, places and we went back, we said, well, how did, uh, you know, we said, how did Walt and Co. <laughs> build Disney? Because there weren't Imagineers uh, back then. Mm. Uh, and it was uh, subject matter experts. He went to architects to build buildings and he went to, um, you know, where he needed a train, he went to a locomotive company that, you know, made locomotive or whatever the case was. So a little bit more of the base um, discipline. So I went to some architecture firms. And I found a team uh, at, a, at an architecture firm that came over and they said, hey, we've evaluated your process and we can definitely help you, but can we try something new? And I said, I'm real scared of that uh, because I have a tight timeline, but I believe in always saying yes to trying something new that could potentially be a big win. So uh, we started a different workflow and, and a traditional design pack, I won't, I won't go into the, the details of it, but a traditional design package is often done in AutoCAD um, and that's kind of where you get all of your dimensions and drawings, your blueprints, if you will, for those of you who might not be as familiar, um, or how they're going to build the building. Um, and this team uh, worked in a different software, Revit, uh, which is just a, I mean, there's several, it's kind of like, a, you know, there's a, a power drill and a screwdriver. They accomplish the same thing. One just has more power than the other. So it's not there's not a right or a wrong way, but they did it. They worked in a different workflow and it ended up being a really successful workflow for what we needed for the expedited amount of time. Uh, at the end of that, one of the gentlemen looked at me and said, do you think this could be a company? And I said, I, I think this industry is magical and wonderful and that you've helped us a lot. And I think you could do something. Uh, you guys, you have a great team and I, I believe in you. And 
Uh, it's funny because several years later, uh, when Jeremy uh, found himself looking for his next great adventure, uh, that company had actually, or those individuals had uh, broken off from the company, uh, went into specialized show design and production, and they had built a, a company. And they actually had been working on uh, several things that we can't talk about, but they were working on some really cool stuff. And they said, hey, uh, you seem to have really, I had actually shared my story. This, the gentleman that I, I'm referring to is Francisco Nunez, and he is the president and owner of Franken Design. <clears throat> um, and he said, I, you know, he said, I was really inspired by your story you shared with me years ago about how you just kind of got into it. He said, uh, I also happened to never finish college. And he said, I thought that was uh, pretty, uh, I was pretty proud to hear someone that was willing to say that out loud because sometimes people, you know, like, Ugh. and I was like, oh, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not necessarily proud of it, but I'm not afraid to say it. It is what it is. Um, and he said, no, I, I just, I really liked your story. And I think you're really passionate about this. And I need someone like you because I want to grow this company. Uh, I said, what company? And he's like, the one you told me to start. <laughs> So I, I, I hadn't realized that I had kind of, I think it was very casual and said, yeah, make a company. And um, I mean, I thought uh, that, yeah, maybe that could be beneficial. I didn't think he'd do it, but he did it. And it worked out well, which is fantastic because now I am an executive producer for Franken Design. Uh, many moons later, so, several years actually. And uh, I, I am helping grow a small company. And it, it, it's interesting because I never, I think that our little pre-chat before we, we started the session, I never saw myself in this role because I always saw myself in very much a producer role for an attraction. And I, um, I always wanted to build the next big ride or the next big show or the put another car through a billboard because why not? People love explosions. Uh, and I, that's where I thought I fit in best. And I do. And that is, I, I've learned some lessons along the way. Uh, it's, you know, it's bolted to the ground. Those experiences will always exist. I can always go back to them. So it's a shout out to Mike Eller from what he had told me a long time ago. And that was, I didn't realize how important of a lesson that was. And then uh, also a callback to, again, Cynthia, uh, these constants in my life. And uh, where, you know, Cynthia had said, well, you know, I looked at her, I said, well, what do I do now? I've, I've opened a major e-ticket. I've worked on some really large lands. I've kind of hit some very high dollar projects. And I, I don't, I can't necessarily get more money or I can't get better IPs. I'm working with the best of the best. What is, what is next? And she said, well, you have to figure that out. And maybe what's next is not actually growing that. Maybe it's, it's finding a different purpose or whatever the case was. And it just kind of inspired me to think about what, so it, it's again, serendipitous, if you will, just how these things happen. And I realized that there's a lot of pain points with poor documentation on projects. I had experienced them several times over. And I realized this team was finding a way to um, reduce some of the friction, let's say, uh, that came with producing these ideas. And when I reached down deep inside of myself after I got a letter that said, thank you for your service, uh, the, the door is <laughs> this way. Um, and oh. I said, uh, well, uh, bye Epic for now. I guess I'll be back one day maybe. Uh, and I, when I walked out, I said, what, what is it that I want to do? And I said, I have always been an ad, I've been passionate and an advocate for really cool experiences. I just want to be a part, Hagrid's is great. You get to go into the Forbidden Forest. You get to all these, these core tenants, these meeting Hagrid's, meeting creatures, being in the forest, um, flying on a motorbike, meeting these characters, an intimate connection with Hagrid himself, something that really only uh, Harry only ever had, uh, running into Fluffy casually, um, being caught in Devil's Snare, your own story, your own agency, creating these experiences, what I was so passionate about and then I realized that I had watched some of my peers struggle with not being able to, to produce that end package well. And I said, oh, I can fix this. I can support my teams. Maybe I'm not the person leading the project anymore, but I can support the individuals who are also trying to develop an idea. The DNA is out there and maybe they just need help translating that into a, um, a buildable format that allows their ideas to be one-to-one. -one. So it's not that I thought I, I wanted a Mickey Mouse ride and I got Star Wars, uh, that would be weird. So you need to make sure that uh, you're setting those creatives up for success. So my, my new role and my new opportunity is helping, um, helping my teams and other teams that I haven't met before uh, find a better way to take their creative vision and deliver it so that their whatever the the little the spark or whatever the whatever the goal of that that attraction or or show or whatever land trash can I don't know everything has to be designed a park bench that looks like a domino has uh, nobody ever thinks about it but the the person that designed that probably took two months of their time you know so it's like everything has to be so meticulously thought out in this industry and there's mm -hmm. so much thought and it's if I could help those storytellers tell their story 
maybe that's my purpose and maybe maybe that's um that's my my new thing and uh you know like i said i always have the opportunity to go back and produce attractions or shows at some point in the future uh i certainly hope the industry is going to have more opportunities uh, i'm relatively young still so i think i got a few more years but uh right now i'm helping my 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 people my tribe my community i'm helping them tell their stories in a more successful format and um, that I, I never, I never saw myself here. I never thought I would help run a small business. I never thought I, I wear 17. I can't tell you what an average day looks like. Cause I wear 17 hats. I take out the trash. I I'm a project manager. I'm a producer. I'm a strategist. I'm, I'm building strategy plans. I'm connecting I, like whatever needs to be done. And that's in itself is like, it's its own special little project. And I'm absolutely loving it. And, um, it was sad to, to leave universal again, but uh, as I learned long ago, I can always come back and that's great. And I'm, I hope, and I say that repeatedly because I hope people realize that if a door ever closes, it's definitely not closed. Just get a crowbar in there and crack it right back open. Totally doable. Uh, so long as you don't do anything inappropriate, like don't be weird, but <laughs> you'll, you can, you can always come back uh, to a place. You're and, talking to unsung heroes and, and Cynthia and Chris who are both exceptionally weird. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, also oh, yeah, be weird be because you, can, you what, can't be in this industry if you're not weird. So. What's what's yeah, doing yeah. too much? What's too weird? I don't. We don't know what's too, too weird. weird is. I, I, should, I, screen, I, I should screen cap that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you, can, you can you can go back to the YouTube later um, and and find that thing it. and you can have that. Don't be too weird. Just like I said, don't lock people in rooms and ask for jobs. But I mean, I I can't not say that because it worked. So just don't be to do it, but don't be weird about it. You know. No, so. it's. It's uh, gently take hostage of people. Thank you, Michael. Oh yeah, I think gently I think Mike take said it. hostage. <laughs> <laughs> the politically correct. I think actually Cynthia and I were talking one time. We were I think on Twitter, and we had a, a lively exchange about something. And she said, and then he accosted me, and I was like, I, I didn't take offense to it, but then instantly <laughs> Cynthia sent me a message that said, I'm going to be canceled, and <laughs> she deleted it. So it was so funny. I'm like. Uh, <laughs> Uh, which is great because uh, it means we're all learning and, and growing and finding new ways to, you know, even when we say something we shouldn't, but it was funny. I, I loved it. Um, but anyways, uh, so yeah, that, that's kind of uh, <laughs> uh, this guy, this guy on the screen here. I'm also really bad about giving credit to everyone. And I'll, I'll talk about that later, but this, this dead skull guy, uh, he's a hero of sorts too. I don't, I don't know how to find it. This is, it'll be embarrassing later right there. He's amazing. He's like a whole other he's the projection mapping, the, the EDM culture and all the screens and the visuals. He like he I think at like 16, 17 started traveling around the world, like playing hockey, making visuals on tour with random music artists. And now he's working at Moment Factory. Like he just secured that job and like he's making uh okay, crazy okay. projection all right, all right. Oh, well, That's hang on, hang on. So That's I, cool. I, you I need to be a guest on our show. Oh, sorry. He's he's great. Uh, call him or whatever. He's he's a cool dude. He's, he's down cool. the street from you. Please get in touch with us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. De 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 Declan, call call these. I don't know how to find them. Call the people here, anyways. But yeah, but there's so many great. Find us, Jeremy. You can give us. Oh. You can give him our oh. email. You have Oh my our goodness. Email. Hold on. Before you ask me another <laughs> question, I have I have to throw this out there because I realized I told a story, and I'm sure someone out there cares. Uh, maybe. Uh, the cheese story from earlier where I watched a gentleman model cheese endlessly for yes. months uh, because it couldn't get an approval to look enough like uh, Tom and Jerry cheese uh, from <laughs> poor, poor Warner Brothers just said it's the wrong cheese. It's the wrong cheese. It's not right. And uh, he uh, he ended up working with me at Universal. He's a brilliantly talented model or whatever. But I will never forget the day because I'm so passionate about trying to like point out and uh, I, I like to give credit. I will get to this later, but like, I love to give credit to everyone because nobody gets credit. And I think it's really important to hear names. And uh, someone taught me this, uh, his name's Gary Blumenstein, but you always I'm just give credit to right. every- That's literally Yeah, well, I, I mean, I, I guess <laughs> this is names. the name of the show. But uh, he, I actually took a huge picture with the ride vehicle somewhere in Europe and sent it to him. And I was like, this, you, you made this foam thing that's a ride. And then we ultimately took photos of it in Abu Dhabi and sent it to him. And uh, it was just like such a, like a wonderful thing to remember. That was like one of my first days I watched him do that. And then I was able, like he, what he did, which was his passion, allowed me to learn and grow into my, it was just all, uh, well, serendipitous if we're gonna try to make a count. Um, but yeah, it was, it was wonderful. That. So I love it. Uh, but he's a wonderful person, models wonderful things. He's great. So I'm um, huge shout out get to him. him he's he's by Let's far. Get him on no, the show. Let's get him no one on the knows show. who he is, but he is um 
he's done wonder. I think he's actually just done, I don't know if I can talk about it. I'm gonna say it anyways. He's just done the, the expo out. Um, uh, he worked with uh, um, Chuck Roberts, brilliant uh, exhibit designer, works with Thinkwell Group. Uh, I worked with him on the Nixon Library, which I never thought I would care about a presidential library and now I, I'm in love. Um, but I was able to work on that during my Thinkwell time with him. And uh, Kevin, I think was his main modeler and did some really, really great work on the expo. So if you're in uh, the Middle East and watching, which maybe, uh, go see the expo. Uh, it's wonderful. I worked on it for a while and Kevin modeled all that beautiful stuff. So I think there's a SpaceX rocket that's not real, but kind of looks real. So that's, that's a thing. Right, Tangents. So if anyone knows Kevin, Kevin's his name? Kevin, Kevin, Kevin Prim. Kevin, someone Kevin, tell wow. Kevin to. <laughs> someone tell Kevin to <laughs> contact us. We want him on the show. Uh, he's, he's a wonderful Kevin guy. P-R-I-M-M. -M. Oops. Sorry. Anyways. Uh, so yeah, sorry. Uh, another question. I I felt yes. like I had to do justice to the cheese story. I'm so sorry. You did. You did. It's wonderful. We can, we can talk about cheese for for yes, exactly. <laughs> I know. I, I don't say that because um, fromage of Fowles is very French, and I don't like that. <laughs> fromage au fil. It's super easy. Fromage au fil. Fromage of Fowles. Mm. Oh, I don't nope. like anything that has files <laughs> on the end for obvious reasons. Mm. Um, fromage au fil. Don't. Don't be weird. That, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Can you not just call it cheesy legends? Well, oh, I'm. I like. I'm, I'm down. People that like cheese are cheesy legends. Legends, and you can be like, oh, everyone else is going. Oh, I'm going to have this banoffee pie, which is one of my favorite desserts. But every time I find myself at the end of a meal now, I'm just like, what's their cheese board going to be like? Mm -hmm. And I, I, I also listen to a, a podcast. I make, on, I make one there. of the best cheese balls that you have ever oh. tasted. Balls? Life. No, I said cheese boards. Well, honey, oh, I, make the awesome, I make the most awesome cheese ball. Oh. And and don't go there. I'm not. Thank you. There um, a that, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Yes, because you know Jeremy, he's he's got accessories anyway that he likes to show during our post and pre shows. It, it kind of oh, depends the, how tired it's he is. Is now a post show thing that's happening? Oh, all right. <laughs> People should want to get horrific. on our it's show. Not, ladies and gentlemen, People it's not horrific. Like, want to be guests here just to be able to go to the post show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I didn't even know that was a. I didn't. Even, I didn't even know that was a thing. The post show. I said you've got to stay on. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I wasn't aware. I mean, Sven told me nothing. I also I worked with this man for a long period of time, and I he never showed me that video of him dancing. So, uh, I, <laughs> evidently, I don't know enough about my coworkers. Uh, but <laughs> which that was, this is a delight watching that video. I I wish oh, I would have seen that man. sooner. But anyways, he was he was such a great guest. All of our guests are great. I I I love them. Anyway, oh, yeah. so Chris, you were asking your your question. Yeah. So. Regardless of IP, Jeremy, because IP always mm. has such a big control over our industry. Sure. So, 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 so take your creative and uh, producing brain out from a specific IP hmm. and, and tell me what your dream project would entail. Dream project. Oh, no, my goodness. Budget, uh, budget, budget limit, it unlimited. Yeah, unlimited. which is like, is this like magic. Unlimited. If a genie turned up and said, yes. Jeremy, you can have the dream project that you want, but you it's it's yours. It doesn't have an IP. You're not feeding off of someone else's creativity and sure, mind sure. and the rest of it. What would you want to see in the world? So if you want to use mm -hmm. an IP, then use one in the sense of that's what I want to use, not that's one that's there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, that's hard. Um, <laughs> I, okay, so it's kind of a weird one. I, I, I don't, I, maybe it's appropriate. I, I don't think, it's actually not that weird, but I do um, just, I mean, knowing what product exists out there and, and just knowing how difficult it can be depending on markets and where you build something and, you know, something like um, Poudafoo's uh, wonderful walkthroughs and things that might not translate to the, the American audience in the same way. You know, there's just, there's interesting things that wouldn't normally cross pollinate. Um, and I honestly, I would love, I mean, I like the idea of we've reached a point, so this is a little sci-fi, I suppose, but I like the idea of reaching a certain point where we start sending people backwards. 
um, into different uh, decades and time periods uh, mm -hmm. and being able to spin the day um, back in time and then kind of coming back so that you can, uh, I'll go deep for you for a moment here. Well, you can reflect on how wonderful you have it now versus, but it, I, the idea being that if there was some fun um, hybrid, you kind of go into a machine of sorts. And once you're in that machine, it, it you know, you type in your date or whatever. And I suppose it would be, uh, if I have unlimited money, I could probably do a lot, but let's just say I only had enough for like four little like theme park lands, like being able to spend, go back to the Cretaceous and spend all day in the Cretaceous where everyone that's theirs from the current realm and the folks that are working there all came back and they're kind of researchers and they help introduce you and that you can have, it can be filled with so many different types of experiences. And, um, and then you get to, at the end of the day, like I said, come back to the current day and, uh, or go back to the civil war <laughs> or go, um, back to any, any particular thing. I love that idea. Maybe even one that breaks and when you, you accidentally get sent to the future. That'd be fun. Like, I think some kind of, I think time travel, sorry, the theme would be time travel because who doesn't love time travel, but I don't Absolutely. know that I would want it to be around, uh, any kind of, uh, known character or something of that, or actually what would be great. There's some really fun, I do love immersive theater stuff. And unfortunately it doesn't always translate to large theme parks, but um, kind of where you you take a voyeuristic role and you're watching something, but maybe the figures aren't so aware of you. So something, I don't know, like a sleep no more where the individuals don't, uh, the, the performers don't um, interact with you. They just go about their um, their experience and you're, you're just watching. Uh, the idea to go back to the civil war and perhaps see um, a, an important the battle. Civil war. Which civil war are you talking about? <laughs> well, I, I mean, I, I'm speaking of the American Civil War, but I guess technically speaking. Here we go. Um, International platform. Oh, a civil war. Uh, that, well, that's the beauty of this, is that you can go back to whichever one you'd like because you've given me unlimited money. <laughs> no, but I, I like the idea that you could... Um, you could spend a day in a period of time in the past or maybe even accidentally end up in the future for a fun um, perspective. And I think that's great. And it would be, I don't know that I want a bunch of rides. I think it would be very organic and it would be very much walking around and experiencing things um, that just would have naturally occurred um, in those time periods. Uh, I think something like that would be really, really interesting. I would really, I think it would be great. And then the programming for it uh, sorry, my producer heads clicked on now, and I'm looking for every way to monetize return on investment. Anyways, I'm going through all my. I, I want to dip in because I've got I've got plenty of ideas. I, 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 <laughs> I'm loving I'm loving this as an idea. So you go in, you oh. go in you go through the turnstiles, and as opposed to I'm um, you going to use the entrance to Main Street Disney, um, where you sure, walk yeah. underneath um, the train track. Now, mm -hmm. if that's four different paths into four different zones of time, and each of them. Direct, like you, you the, the outside of the room spins. Oh and no! See, no, see, I of where you're turning up. So your time machine's gone wrong. So you interact every time you go to the park. You're going through it in a different route because uh, you've got your guest tag. They know who you are. They know that you've been there before. So you know you've done it one way. And yes, you've got the same rides, but you've got different uh, the the characters uh, that are there. The actors interact with you differently. <sighs> As you walk oh, in at different goodness. times, so different Look at times world. Day, you get different there's experiences. There's How a mad. there is a place that um oh girl in Arizona or or in Colorado. Oh my God, Kelly, you must know this. Um, it, it's it's uh it somewhere in the oh. desert, in, like in the fucking boondocks. Oh, is it is, is Santa Fe, New Mexico? It's it's not no it's not Burning, Burning Man, Man Kelly. It's not Burning <laughs> no, is it is it is it, is it? Oh okay, I was saying meow wolf is, meow is wolf. quite. <laughs> it's it's a oh crap! It's a park that you. Is this a park? Is this a park you went to alone? No. <laughs> no, okay. no, I've never been there. I've never been there. Stop it! I'm gonna find it. <laughs> oh. Do we need? Do we need to not? Do we need, have we just workshop something that needs to not go out onto the internet forever so that we can? Well, just... I was about to say, in inadvertently, we've just invented an IP that we should probably trademark very, very quickly. <laughs> oh, I am Chris, so, and I know how all the technical things and all the show control goes together, and I know the company, and I know how all of Disney's parades and Universal's parades all go together. Hi. Oh. See. 
Okay, but no, Chris, but shut up. I, I think that's like a, you know, I just like, I like the idea that you just kind of go to these, these space. I, I just think that would be fun. I, I like the idea of, pro, I'm big on programming. I, I didn't really learn about the, uh, I actually worked on a cruise ship project with a little company called Virgin a few years ago when I was at Thinkwell. It was quite fun. Um, really, really fun brand. Uh, and it was completely out of my wheelhouse, but uh, really, really got into like what, because they program every minute of every day in every space. So if you're not familiar with cruise ships, every space is utilized for whether it's uh, arts and crafts, um, dining or bingo or whatever that you have to make use because you're quite literally on a, a boat and you have a limited amount of space. Um, but I really learned a lot about like the intimate like programming and people absolutely love simple little things. And like just the idea of like a space where during the day, you know, the, there can be a coloring book activity uh, or you draw the dinosaurs or, uh, you know, if you're, if you're, I don't know that you'd want to draw a civil war, any of them, but you could, I suppose, or the idea that you could be there for music. I think, I think actually what I was looking for is I do love uh, Renaissance festivals, very much poo de foo style kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Like a little bit more, less rides and a little bit more that, just that's, that's even enjoying worse my pronunciation of it. Poo de foo. Oh, no, I, love it, Cynthia. I, oh, no, Cynthia, correct, correct my American ways. Pre, 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 pre do foo. You can say it. Wow. It's, it's I, pre. I was very off. <laughs> it's not, it's not poo de foo. It's pre. Oh. I know, I know, yeah, you know. You're supposed I've to worked with some, I've worked with some very influential French individuals at Universal Creative, and I'm sure all of you know who that is. So he's probably judging me right now if he watches this. But the, the, the word can be totally, if you say P-W-E-E, -E, Pui. Pui. That's, that's how you say it, Pui. P, oh. the P yeah. I mean, sound, and we. I heard it Pui. before I'd ever read it. And if what? I had read it first and then said it, I'd have said uh, pie de fowl. <laughs> well, I don't know. It might be closer than I was. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's magic. I love it. I love it. Oh, no, it's and it's the, a wonderful. And the, and the I'm depressed. And is, it, it, it is very French. <laughs> I love but it, it's a it, it's such a wonderful concept and, and and it really it really is just a, another version of like a renaissance festival it's not necessarily they didn't necessarily invent the concept but they did a wonderful job with the medium and um and i love i can't wait to see where they i know they're always expanding and popping up more but i, I do like the notion that you just kind of experience a time frame and it doesn't maybe it could have a ride but it doesn't have to i, I like the idea that it's just a space you get to explore i mean i think that's inherently what people want I also think that, that it, some of these things, and I, I know that I'm a technology professional, I'm an engineer, that's what I do. But I think some of these spaces <laughs> need to not have technology in them. Sure. Not have a roller coaster and make a I... point of not having a screen in front of you and having a live interaction. And I think that's so much more engaging in this, this time that we're in. Live oh, sure. is so important. And all of this, like, let's slam on a VR headset and take someone somewhere else. Mm. So it takes them away from their family. It takes them away from their group. It takes them away from any interaction. And we're so used to looking at screens all of our lives now. It would be magical to go back to having almost live mm -hmm. performances. Sure. Well, and, and it's funny because uh, I would say it's funny because, you know, we build these multi-million dollar rides. And by no means am I discouraging anyone from build, building multi-billion dollar rides that I could produce because... Or my friends, uh, so I don't want to. <laughs> uh, all my ride vendor friends, I'm sorry. Uh, but it's funny when you think about some of the most successful events and things that I've been a part of at Universal. Just speaking from that perspective, um, you the the Halloween Horror Nights. Uh, those are just you're just walking through a set, a movie set. That's all it is. It, it's that that's the now it might be quite scary and the performers are screaming at you. But the the idea of just you know they've actually explored mediums where that that team, Mike's team, and um, there's a whole slew of them, uh, Patrick Raylier, Jason Horn. There's great folks over there, Laura Wallace, she's a lot of the parades. Um, but there's a lot of great folks over there that have produced, especially in the entertainment spectrum, um, these walk through or just these sort of immersive spaces. And they've not even all of them are scary. They've done one with Beetlejuice and Ghostbusters in the past few years, and they've been quite, uh, they're silly. They're not, they're not, um, they're not necessarily scary. And, but those spaces are so, those events are well attended and they're very, very popular. And uh, they sell out frequently. And it's really just people walking through. When you think about it, there's no ride at the end. You just walk through essentially a queue. Um, so it, it is interesting. People do love just to experience a space. 
and nothing has to happen outside of just a, being in a really neat environment. So I, I mean, that's, apparently having the fear of God put into you is something that people will queue for. Like, I, well, I, yeah. I, I can't they, get well, that. To be to be fair, they don't queue for it. They pay hundreds of dollars and then queue for it. Or yeah. they pay <laughs> more hundreds of dollars to not have to queue for it. So technically. I, think I would pay hundreds of dollars to not have to queue for it and not have to have it anywhere near me. I, I've said I've said this on Unsung Heroes before. Like Thought Park in the UK did a Fright Night. Oh, yeah. And they did, not, they did not advertise it very well. And we weren't told. I was in the park in October. And I had no idea it was happening. And a person in the pig mask from Saw jumped out of a bush at me and I don't have a flight response so I literally full pelt it's this oh. is that was the second time and the uh, of two times I've ever thrown a punch in my life oh first one was at school and I right. was being bullied and I reacted to it um totally right. after totally. seven warnings <laughs> and this time is that's one thing people in masks terrify me and I don't need that and it jumped out and I punched as hard as I could. Um, and I, and I, I broke an actor's nose and eye socket. Um, and oh. I was very, very apologetic about it, but it made me jump and I didn't like it. So now I want it to go away from me all the time. And <laughs> Thought Park brought in after that event, wristbands. Uh, like, don't, don't all scare me. Of you. It's like, uh, it's, it's, okay. it's, there's the don't scare me ones, or let me be scared, but don't scare me directly. Scare one of my party. And I'm oh, just like, yeah, yeah. I've got the red one that goes, don't come near me. Oh. Don't go anywhere near my party. I will walk on my own so that my party can be scared, but sure. way in front of me. And I'm behind and don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Please don't do it. Because you're doing what? your job. You're doing a fantastic job. I don't want like I'm. <laughs> I don't want to play. <laughs> no, it's it's funny you say it because um, in addition to just the the demand, and I, I can't speak to how successful it's been, but it's been around for a while now. But they even offer tours during the day of all this uh, the haunted houses and mazes at Universal, and um, I think some of the other parks as well, where they because people just want to walk through them with the lights on and just see the details. So it, it's a testament mm. to that 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 medium is something desirable. I, I mean, one of my experiences with Thankwell, I, I worked on the. Um, I mean, the Leavesden tour, which was quite wonderful. Um, it, obviously, very Harry Potter. Uh, and those are just fun environments to be in. But I worked on the uh, Burbank tour um, when they added um, sort of a studio walkthrough experience. And they recreated the set. Uh, I wasn't necessarily intimately involved in it, but I was just kind of a, um, a helper, if you will. But uh, the, we, we created the Friends set. And that alone, just to sit on that couch and take a photo um, was that, that's there's a line for it out the door most days because it's just uh, and that there's no ride the couch doesn't move <laughs> you just sit there and take a photo but it is just being in that environment and it being authentic mm. that really um, uh, the, our friends uh, some folks at JRA which is a pro uh, prominent uh, design firm they've done a friends touring exhibition as well that I I'm sure and they've recently even done the office uh, the the NBC show so being able to just walk through those spaces are. Um, which I mean, the office is quite wonderful, and that's a whole different conversation. But, uh, but yeah, it just I, I, I think my my ultimate answer to that question is something where it's not a focus. To your point, not on technology, and really just um, not even heavy storytelling. I don't know that we have to give everything a backstory and everything has to be explained. Just mm -hmm. being able to enjoy a space that's just well thought out is is kind a of nice. With a narrative has so much more impact than having to know all of the previous. This this whole sure. Marvel thing at the moment is oh you can't watch this film if you haven't you have watched to watch the last film. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like that. I want to I want to be taken that's why I say don't have IP in this question. Um think about it in a um in a in an approach that's completely separate and it's on its own. And I know that that becomes dangerous to feasibility studies and all of sure. all of that part of the industry. I do understand that. As a Kelly, oh Kelly's appeared. Hello, Kelly. What are you saying, Hi. love? Did you make a mistake? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, what? What's the mistake? Is it that you're on the screen? Because that's not yeah. a mistake. Oh, no, no, this is wonderful. Hey, so why we talk about ways that people have uh, accosted others, we're, sorry, we're not saying that, uh, have, uh, what have we said, uh, pushed others into corners? What was it? Gently took hostage. Gently uh, took hostage. I, 
so this is just hold on. She's nope, nope. She's over here. Anyways, uh, I actually met Kelly during my time at Universal Creative. I was producing um, things again. We can't talk about. Um, but I uh, was gently taken hostage by Kelly in the uh, the hold on. Uh, it was a, a like a, a, a cafeteria space, uh, and she's like, "Oh hi, I know you made Haggard's. Can we be friends?" I was like, uh, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> so. Proof, proof, because I have now stayed in, in, in uh, connection, or uh, connection, well, who am I? Uh, in contact with Kelly, and uh, we've chatted uh, over the, I don't think we've had the, haven't really had the opportunity to work together, um, but I, I, she she had, she had came up to me and she tapped me on the shoulder and said, let's be friends. And I'll never forget that. I don't forget meeting anyone uh, because I, I just want to be friends with everyone. That's just who Jeremy's are. But uh, serendipitous that you have, again, I don't know how to, this works, that you're on the screen now and that I can tell that story. Opposite so. direction. Whatever you think is the right way is the wrong way. Oh, Cindy is there. It's, it's okay. <laughs> oh, no, it doesn't, it doesn't work for me. Uh, Kelly's anyway, there. I can do that easily. Chris is there. You're but up yes, there. We'll, we'll give, I'll give kudos to, I'm just, this is, anyways, uh, to Kelly for that, because I, I, I'll i never forget do, it. Can, but. can we do one of them? Can we make a box? Oh, no. Uh, Maybe uh, not. Well, this is this is kind of. Hold on, this is yeah. a challenge. And so here is exclusive, go. Sarah. I can't no. do it that way. Why well, my I? thumb is my thumb's kind of crooked. That's upsetting. There we go. There. Uh, oh, no, I'm going too far. Everyone, oh, take a screenshot now. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is going to end up being the longest show ever. And oh no! Reason. It's gonna be yeah, it's no, because Jeremy, Jeremy kept talking. This is, this is wonderful. I'm loving it. I'm loving oh, it. Figured it out. Oh, okay. Kelly, Kelly's all right. Still all right. Out, yeah. We're back. We're back on board. All right. Uh, I can't bend my ke uh, Kelly. I, I was gonna say I can't. I can't finger my Kelly that far. Oh my I, can, God. I can't bend my finger Fucking that kidding far. Me? <laughs> right. You can't finger Kelly. Oh my God! What did you just say? <laughs> well, you said it again. We, we got it We're there. Oh, like uh, click <laughs> that. <laughs> I I can't. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, no, it went on forever. I guess because I just talked. Jeremy's <laughs> talk. That's the thing, unfortunately. But I got to give Kelly a shout out, which is like, what what a wonderful thing. Yeah. So we love. Which Kelly. is a, a good. It's a, and she wasn't weird, so it was okay. She just kind of said, "Hey, let's be friends." <laughs> 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 Remember, it, it take people hostage, just don't be weird. That's my like takeaway. Oh my my poor <laughs> company. Don't I, I should I, I, I don't speak on behalf of Frank and Design. <laughs> don't I just or Universal or anyone else. I only speak on behalf of me. Sorry, my weird self. I'm loving I'm loving this. This is this is gonna be the the one of the things that is gonna come back on Unsung Heroes. You will see this. Don't be weird and yeah. take people gently hostage. <laughs> oh, let, let, yeah, let's have them as captions that we can put up yes, at any point. They will Kelly, definitely become captions. There. I love it. I'll make, some, I'll make some real silly faces. Sarah, and you can just stay, party. Kelly, stay. Yeah, Sarah, Sarah come, come join on. the party. Just come, just come say hi. Just... Oh, well, if Sarah comes in here, I have an embarrassing story about, not embarrassing, but she, oh. see, these, these are how you find successful people in this industry. Where's Sarah? Come here. I don't know how to do this. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> it's it's so weird, guys. Honestly, when you're a producer and then you're being produced, like I was telling Kelly this the other day, I'm like, Kelly, I'm so behind, and she's like, I've got you, and I'm like, Wow, I've become all of my designers. <laughs> Just, I need help, please help me. Anyways, but uh, where's Sarah? Where's she at? Come here. She's, she's eating she's chips. Eating chips. <laughs> eat, eat, eat chips. This has gone off the rails. Eat chips on the screen. It's fine. Just... Who cares? No. Sarah, come okay. Well, well come until on. until she. Until she comes on the screen. So she, uh, for uh, if you don't know, uh, Lake Nona, I think everyone's heard of it. It's where uh, Walt, uh, Walt Disney Imagineering is, in theory, moving in the near future. There was a wonderful TEA event there recently. And um, the... Oh, oh, she, oh, wow. <laughs> They're in the same house. <laughs> she, she, I was about to say, how did she just get into the same room? That was like... <laughs> So uh, Sarah, whoever was there, she she came and she um, uh, cornered me uh, when I was trying to get a beverage, an adult beverage. Uh, I, oh, this show's not very PG. A uh, beer. Uh, but anyways, uh, she <laughs> is like, hey, I should PG meet you. And then she's like, can I put you on this crazy TV show? And I had a few beers. And I said, sure, whatever. <laughs> so it, it's serendipitous. Uh, she came up and was my friend. And anyways, so. 
Um, but yeah, so that that's how I met Sarah. And she's like, I'm gonna tell Kelly, and Kelly's like, I know Jeremy, and I hopefully she said a good thing. I don't know, <laughs> but. It, it, it does lead to your point, like connections and, and helping those below and, and supporting those above. Exactly. Does does make connections sure. and does help things. And here even, we are. even if you even if you can't give a job, I can't. Nobody can magically. Well, some folks can. Uh, most folks can't magically make jobs happen. But you're not going to ever find that job. When I, I the number of rooms. I mean, I, for those of you who don't know, but traditionally producers build teams for projects. That's typically every organization is different, but that's kind of the thing. Because you're pulling the the necessary yeah those those ones over there oh this is hard yeah um so they're they're the ones that build the teams and they pull it all together and um so a lot of times when you're sitting in a room and and being able to say when somebody's like do you know an artist do you know somebody the other day somebody's like oh do you know somebody that has like a very like painterly style and digital and it's i mean things that you uh, things i never thought i would learn to say but like oh i do i know three artists who paint that way and it's like well, it's important for me to know people because I may not have known that, but now I'm in a room and A, how am I going to find that person or how is that person going to find me? So I, I'm, I'm big because I would have wanted people to do that for me. And for the most part, folks were always in my court and tried to help me and gave me a lot of opportunities. Um, but uh, if, if you don't have people in your court and you don't have a team and you don't have people that can help you, then uh, it makes it a lot harder to get somewhere. <laughs> 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 I don't know what. I, was saying, I don't know what. I don't know what happened. I'm the only one on the screen, and I'm not sure what to do. It's like, oh, oh, uh, Jeremy, you're not. You're not <laughs> there's a private chat that's running down the side of this that that we communicate in a lot. And I was like, I need to be lost right now, just because I don't want to leave an empty seat on screen because I needed more wine. <laughs> And I said I don't have any more either. And I and but I meant that I don't have any more bottles of wine. And so I said, bring me back. And it's at that point you were all done, and there was no one on screen. I literally <laughs> ran to the bottle. I mean, we can we can do and we can do really inappropriate like unsung oh heroes God. ASMR if oh. you'd like. No, no, oh. no. We have we have. Oh my goodness! There we <laughs> the are. <microphone. laughs> Oh, Cynthia, isn't that lovely? It is lovely. Oh, except oh. for the grind on the microphone there. Oops. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, so I, I do have one final serious question. And, oh, sure. And you know that um, that this, this show is called Unsung Heroes. And um, so my question to you is, who is your unsung hero? Oh, okay. So... Well, I don't know if I can tell the people at home. Uh, you, you guys, kind of, I was warned that this question was coming. So uh, it, it, it brought a lot of great, <laughs> I don't want to say like some anxiety there because I'm like, who do, I, who do I say this to? You know, um, so I actually have two answers and I hope that's okay. Uh, yeah. And one of them might be, one of them might be deemed, I mean, actually I had like 20 answers to this whole thing. I just like, this was rapid fire heroes. This, anyways, everyone's my hero. I, I'm just the guy that has like, my love language is Excel spreadsheets and I make theme park rides. Everyone else does the real work. But anyways, um, uh, I, hi, I'm Jeremy. <laughs> That's how it starts. Um, uh, my, so my first, uh, it's a specific call out to an individual and all, you all may know him actually. Uh, if you've watched the Imagineering story on Disney, uh, there's a moment, and I didn't do the research, seven, six, it's the one on Indiana Jones. And there's actually a moment where someone's sitting <laughs> With a uh, what can only be described as a really, uh, uh, I was going to say crappy, it's it's disrespectful, a very vintage uh, camcorder, um, riding the back of house Indiana Jones track, and it's like, well, uh, on the left hand side of the vehicle you see Indy, and he's hanging from a vine, and you're like, and it's, I, I feel as though uh, if Disney's watching. Uh, you do better, uh, or whoever produced that, fix it in post. You can do this. Uh, it says male narrator, and I. I hate that because uh, that voice is a gentleman named Gary Blumenstein. Uh, and he went on to be the, I mean, everybody plays a role, but he was the, the creative leader, the creative director um, on Haggard's Magical Creature Motorbike Adventure. And a gentleman who has uh, followed a very similar path than me and just going to school, getting, I think he actually swept a model shop. I think he actually did the, the OG wow. Disney. Okay. Uh, I, I, I can't speak to it. 
Oh, oh, look at it. You have pictures. I forgot. Yeah, that's the guy on the right. Because uh, the guy on the left is Alan Gilmore, who kind of made Harry Potter. So just in case you get confused, Gary did not make Harry Potter. <laughs> um, but uh, Gary Blumenstein actually, uh, he, he kind of he lived the the life, if you will, and, and kind of he's had an entire career of theme parks and um, uh, definitely started out with Disney in the early days and, and played a key role in, in some of the Indiana Jones, which I know is a, an attraction that is, uh, it's certainly one of the, I mean, every, I think every attraction deserves uh, a shout out because just uh, producing a, a damn park bench is so hard, uh, let alone something that moves and has sound and technical components, but um, not, ma yes, exactly. Do justice. Take that Disney. Anywho, um, but they, uh, he, he did that and he went on to work with Universal and he's done wonderful things in his career. If you ever get the opportunity to introduce yourself, he's big and friendly and he'll meet anybody and talk to anyone. Um, but he was the creative leader on Hagrid's uh, Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure the ride um and did a wonderful job bringing a team together from the uk the film departments the the orlando based universal creative teams uh and everyone else and just uh is a uh positivity and passion would be the two words and just no matter what and it, it is kind of a creative director that doesn't have to spend a million dollars he's okay with um simple things it being uh, you know analog not everything has to be digital it could be analog or, or whatever the case was bless you um, but just a great uh, mentor and friend, and I had a, a hell of a time uh, producing Hagrid's with him and uh, other epic things, uh, <laughs> again. Uh, but uh, my second answer to that, so shout out to him. Uh, the guy on the left, by the way, I'll shout out why there, if you don't know Alan Gilmore, uh, he was uh, our, our director on the Harry Potter films uh, and worked uh, very closely with Stuart Craig and the rest of the team, JK Rowling and, um, and all of the storytellers that actually produced the actual Harry Potter films. And then he was tapped to come over by Stuart and uh, the Universal Creative Teams to be a part of um, the Hogsmeade and the Diagon Alley um, pieces. Uh, he also was in, um, I believe, Hollywood and worked on that as well. And then he's been sort of a historical individual from translating. I think, uh, again, in the, the spirit of Unsung Heroes, everyone knows who he is, but I don't know that everyone knows that he played a very important role when we talk about translators in Universal Creative having an infinite amount of knowledge on how to produce attractions. And uh, the Harry Potter folks knowing Harry Potter, uh, he also did a really good job of connecting and, and kind of those two, melding those worlds. So he deserves a shout out. But zooming out, my actual answer uh, to your question is my unsung hero is every, and this is corny, I'm sorry, everyone, every <laughs> single person uh, who has ever touched, who's behind a camera or backstage at a theater, theatrical show or built a, a, an attraction or a ride or some kind of themed entertainment piece because this industry, I love everything about this industry, but they suck at giving credit to the people, the creators, and um, the, I, I could go on and on, but art directors, creative directors, show producers, show programmers, artists, uh, rock uh, carvers, uh, general contractors, uh, site superintendents, uh, audio technicians, media designers, VFX producers, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that produce these big, beautiful things that you experience, and, and if not thousands in some instances, and a lot of times uh, there's Even little nods. Players, and... Jeremy, I'm I'm really sorry because it makes me it makes me want to jump in so much. Oh, well, like I'm your your enthusiasm makes makes me like. Oh, wow. um, okay. Well, I thought um, you were. I thought you. I thought I was going to be the third person you hit, and I was worried. <laughs> no, 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 no. In in like in a fantastic way. I I, I have to speak yeah. because I'm excited oh, and I can't get in there. Not, Go. I, I can't totally. control it. The way that we try and um, in in my company, the way that we try and sell this industry is to say, go to think of a park that you've been to, think of a <laughs> attraction that you've been to, whether that be a museum, whether that be um, a walking tour, whether that be a, a a trundle through the British countryside or um, mm -hmm. Warner Brothers in Abu Dhabi or, or Universal mm -hmm. Studios in California or Disney World in Orlando. Think of how many people we do these presentations to literally like minors uh, and go into local colleges and schools and say, think of all of the opportunities there are and think of all of the things that you've seen and tell me how many people you think are involved in that. Yeah. No, it's not the two that are on TV. No, no, it's not. It's not the people. <laughs> like ask the kids the question because they don't realize that. Mm -hmm. There's this wealth of, of opportunity. Oh, I'm going to be a local plumber. I'm just going to go and do people's plumbing in houses. It's like, well, we go for the kids that are going, I, I do know how pipes work, but it's boring to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to go do something cool. I was like, well, you can do something cool, 
with what you know how to do. Yeah. Uh, you, you've learned how to do plumbing, but think of the Fantasmic, which is my favorite attraction oh. anywhere in the world. It's a good the one. Fantasmic water display and, and all of the way that that, uh, that whole performance runs. The amount of actors, the amount of engineering, the amount of um, pipes, not just for water, but for gas as well. There's so many things that go involved in it and so many people and so many brilliant minds. Why can't yeah. you be one of those minds? No, that that's that's it. And yeah, you that's are it. on our show oh. being one of those minds. <laughs> oh, well, but see, that's and that I, I, I know we're like we're you know, I'm getting yelled at about time. Uh, but that's why that's so important to me, because it is, it is there's so many people and it is my kind of I'm going to tie it back to the very first thing I said, which is uh, everyone told me the only job was being an engineer. And I said, OK, that can't be the case. And it's not because even in a movie, thousands of naval names scroll at the end. If you think that, that that's a two hour movie that's not even real versus something that has to last 20, 30 years. So imagine just double it or it's the same number. But there's just millions of people that do this. And mm. uh, you can do anything you want in this industry. Uh, and there's, there's applicable from the guy that plants a tree to uh, plumbing to whatever. So um, that, my unsung heroes are all of the people that don't stand in front of the TV. So next time you run a ride, just remember like thousands of thousands of people that that made that. That that didn't happen with two people standing on a screen saying I built Star Wars or Harry Potter. It's a fallacy. Those are the individuals who lead those teams. So. Ah, thank you for that. That is exactly the reason why we wanted to do. Unsung it's important. Heroes. It's important. It is important. Yeah. It is totally. So we have to go quickly into our fun questions because oh. um, we have to finish the show. <laughs> oh, do your fast so, ones, Cynthia. Do right. the fast questions. My fast and ones. Do the two. All right. I'll do the um, two. Yeah. Your favorite sandwich? Oh, uh, chicken salad or Cuban? Cuban? Oh, what's a Cuban sandwich? Ham, mustard, uh, pressed, like almost like a panini, but I think people would hate okay. that. Oh, you should have a Cuban. It's delicious. Okay. <laughs> I, I, mean, will, I, I will. Mustard, so therefore I'm out. Uh, oh, all right. Well, next time you, when you're in town for IAPA, we'll get a Cuban. <laughs> okay. We'll get, we'll get a Cuban. We'll get a Cuban. I'll have a bite, we'll say, of, yours. We'll, I'll have a bite of yours and tell you you're wrong. I'll, I'll do, I'll just say chicken salad since Cuban. <laughs> No, 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 because I, I, I love learning new things. So when I'm going to Orlando, to Ayapa, Orlando, so Jeremy, let's meet up, and then you'll take me to wherever you have your, your best Cuban. In We're Orlando. Cuban. It's a very okay. Florida thing. Yeah. All right, all right, cool beans. Okay, uh, next fun question. Your favorite smell? Smell, ooh, 100% my time spent in the haunted houses. It's the fresh cut wood lumber. Oh, there's nothing like that. It's just like fresh, fresh wood, fresh set, or it'd be the same on like a, a film set or something, but fresh plywood. Mm. All nothing right. Beautiful. Okay. So Your weird. least favorite, I'm going to do a third one. Your least favorite smell. Ooh, that's a hard one. That is a hard one. I don't know. I don't like moldy smells. I don't like, I mean, I don't think anyone does, but I don't like any, whenever you can smell like a moldy, something musky, like a, like, um, like a, a fabric or something that's been rained on and sat for a bit. Uh, it's, I'm not a. Mm. Yeah. Don't, that, that that would be I'm bad. Yeah. That. I'm with you. On that. Yeah. All right, Chris. My fast okay. fired questions are done. Hypotheticals. No, I'm not. I'm not going to do. I, 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 <laughs> what? No, we'll do. We'll do this one. Then we'll do a quick hypothetical, and then we're going to oh. end, end on the usual. So, um, because this is unsung heroes, Jeremy, <laughs> if you could have a superpower, what would it be? Uh, oh, 100% time travel. I, I said, yeah. That, yeah I, I, wanna, I thought I wanna... it might be, and it's mine yeah. as well. Okay, that, well, that's a good one. It's, it, the possibilities are endless. A, dinosaurs, and B, buying Tesla before anyone knew. I mean, <laughs> it's like... I, I, I'd go for Apple and then Tesla. I'd oh, go yeah. For Apple and what? then is an early... Um... <laughs> don't Don't limit yourself. Yeah, so and, and then I'd go into PayPal and that, be friends that's with where the Mark unlimited funding would come for the time travel theme park. There you go. Uh -huh. oh, he's got it. He's got it. He's a brain. He's a brain. There he is. There he is. Um, All and right. Then before we I ask the final question, I'm just going. I'm just going to say because I set this up in the pre-call and it's going to make us run long and everyone's going to be upset at me. It's, and I know Cynthia's got another call in two minutes, and I don't. It's care. okay. It's okay. I told <laughs> them that I would be five minutes late. 
<laughs> okay. Well, we're going to do this one quickly. Um, so you've got to live in a motorway services for a year. So a highway services. Mm -hmm. You've got to live in there for a year. How are you going to do it? Oh, I mean, I, I think you've, that'd got, be... you've got a minute to answer answer this. Oh no, it, it just it'd be great. It's kind of like what when um, Tom Hanks was living in the the, air, the airport. Like I, I'd be all. into. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, but you I, don't I'd have be... any of your money. You just you're dumb. Like you, well, you're neither did Tom Hanks. No money. Oh, I mean, I'd be. I, I well, they don't have those little carts that you'd have to steal all the quarters. I'd be at a loss. Uh, no, I, I mean, I'd be, I'd like that. I wouldn't mind if I could find, I'd make friends. I mean, clearly I have an issue making friends. So I'd make friends with Subway because I mean, you got to eat fresh and you just, I would have Cubans. That would be the answer. I'd have them make me Cubans. And I would just, uh, the, the showers are quite, I don't know. I can only speak for uh, select American, but if you've ever been to a Bucky's, which I know there are Bucky's fans out there. Oh, they have wonderful facilities, uh, much nicer than my home shower, even. So, I mean, uh, would it be so bad? I think it'd be delightful. I mean, Sarah um, produced. Oh! <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, yeah, Bucky's is a uh, it's a th it's actually a theme park that is a service station. It's quite odd, but wonderful. Um, no, see, look, you, <laughs> oh see, I, I could see the judgment in Chris's face. He's like a Bucky, right? And then all no, of a sudden, no, I, wasn't, pops I wasn't up. judging that. I was I was judging and thinking, Sarah motorway service stations in the uk trying to live in one of them i uh, know oh no no, no, no. even in cold no. No. no yeah i was gonna no. say uh i've not spent a lot of time in those but i don't think it's quite the same as the bucky's so no, shout I've out to bucky's to Bucky experience uh, it certainly is not <laughs> <laughs> no we're not uh, doing that but, all right but, but that's... Last, last question <laughs> sorry <laughs> cynthia <laughs> we gotta go full screen me ladies Ooh, Chris gets full oh, screen. I know, I do. This is the only time that I get to do it, and it's important to me. So, Jeremy, if you had to for the rest of your life wear one hat, it was a big hat or a little hat, which one do you pick? And these are the hats. Mm. Oh, we haven't done this live in so long. I, I, to be perfectly honest, I have quite a large head, and in a past life, we never discussed it, but I used to do Ren Fair magic. So I would go with the top hat. It's a bit more on brand. The top hat doesn't fit my head, as you can see in that picture. And also here, it sits on top of my head. And it's not a very, it's a very tall top hat, but it's not a very large top hat. It's this a good one, top hat. The little one works as a fascinator. And I mean, I know it's a little bit camp, but... I feel oh, like yeah. anyone in our industry could walk into an event wearing this and no one would bother to the point where Cynthia, I think next IAPA, I might even oh. wear this. Oh, whole... yes. Oh, yes. Absolutely. It has I, clips I... and everything. <clears throat> and I'll, I'll wear the top hat. I have so many <laughs> questions about where, where the hats came from, but it, I don't, I don't want to. <laughs> Amazon. Oh, Oh, well, that makes, where does everything come from? This all started well, yeah. off, uh, the, the, I'm just going to do this really quickly and then we're going to end. This all started off as like, I want a hat and I hand the hats and, a, and, a, and a, view, a, a review of hats for all of our guests and pick one in our oh. pre call so that I can pick a hat that I think is either the polar opposite or the exact, um, mm. is it antithesis? Is that the word? Something antithesis. Yeah, I think so. Of, of a person and then have yeah. another hat there yeah. opposite them antithesis that's it yeah yeah so you've got one one hat that, that is their antithesis and an other an other hat that is one of my stock hats mm. and it never happened because it got no. very, very quickly and um it could have ended up, ended up getting quite offensive so i decided not to do it so you get a big hat little hat and that's the end of the story Oh, well, big hat all the way. That, that's my choice. <laughs> Jeremy, <laughs> you are an amazing human and definitely amazing. an unsung hero. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, thank you. Really. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for being on this show. You have <laughs> made it absolutely incredible, and it's just so cool. And I love this show just because we have such awesome, passionate, and inspiring people that come on it. And it's just it, one of the most frustrating things about this show is that I can't hug you. So um, oh. 
I, I, I will end the show with that. But first of all, tell us, tell us where, where we can, where we can see you, what your, where your Instagrams. You. Yeah. Where we can oh, find you. Where, where you can gently take me hostage. Exactly. <laughs> uh, we love that. Yeah. So I'm sure you can, uh, I don't know if it pops up on a screen anywhere or something, but I'm sure you can all find me Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, I'm, I'm on all the things. Uh, find me any of those, or Franken Design. You can find me through Franken Design, uh, the website, which is quite literally frankendesign.com, or any of their social medias, um, or uh, any of. I'm connected to all these wonder, well, most of these wonderful people. So feel free to reach out to them and say, well, how do I, how do I find a Jeremy? Or uh, extra bonus points, uh, I'm always at IAPA because I'm because why not? Uh, and you can come and find me and tell me, word vomit to me about your passion for the theme park industry. And I'll buy you a coffee and tell you how I would do it. Or you could watch this video and it'd save you a whole lot of time. Put it on your <laughs> LinkedIn, Jeremy. Use it, use it. Send people here to learn who you are. It's sure. a wonderful conversation. Yes. And we haven't actually said anything too inappropriate. No, oh, good. Absolutely. No. We've been Surprising. quite good. All right, <laughs> everyone, please make the world a better place. Go hug a hero. Jeremy, thank you so much for being on the show. Chris, you know I love you. Thank you for being the co-host on this with me. Kelly and Sarah, you are my every two week heroes and even more so all over the week <laughs> and preparing everything. We love you. Roll the intro as the outro. Bye, everybody. <laughs>